Chairman, it's Emma Code Meeting Producer. I can confirm that the live stream is now live. Oh, thank you. Uh, good morning and welcome to this virtual meeting of the West Sub Area Planning Committee. Before consideration of today's business, I'll outline the protocols for the meeting. Today's meeting is being live streamed to the public via Microsoft Teams and is also being recorded. When members are speaking, they may choose to use their video. If the Council's live stream fails during the meeting and we cannot share the proceedings, I'll adjourn the meeting so that access can be restored. If the issue cannot be resolved, I will halt the meeting and the remaining business will be concluded, <coughs> sorry, will be concluded at a future date. If a member experiences a technical issue, I'll adjourn for a short period to try to re-establish their connection. As I call members to speak, I'll remind you to switch on your microphone. If for some reason you cannot be heard, the Democratic officer will advise you. The vote will be taken by roll call of committee members by the Democratic uh, officer. Members must be present for the duration of the discussion on each planning application in order to be able to vote. We have public speakers at the meeting today and they will be joining the meeting by telephone. Where a member has declared a non-registrable interest, a disposable pecuniary interest or an interest by virtue of any trade union membership in a matter, they must leave the virtual meeting. Their departure will be confirmed and they'll be invited to rejoin the meeting at an appropriate time. To confirm the procedure for today's meeting, is that members of the committee who wish to speak on an item should indicate by using the raise your hand function, which is being monitored by the vice chair. Any members not on the committee or unable to use the raise your hand function who wish to ask a question should indicate by typing an X in the chat box. Before we start today's business, I'll ask the Democratic Services Officer to ask the committee members to confirm they are present and state their electoral division. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Councillor Bastin. Good morning, John Bastin, Councillor for Constantine, Mullen and Budock. Councillor Biggs. Uh, good morning, David Biggs, uh, Councillor for Camborne, Triswithian. <coughs> Councillor Code. Good morning, Graham Code, Councillor for Hale South. Councillor Duffin. Good morning, Joyce Duffin, <coughs> Councillor for Mount Cork and Portrees. Councillor Eakin Smith. Good morning, uh, David Egan Smith, Councillor for 11. Councillor Harding. Good morning, Roger Harding, Newly Mazel Division. Councillor Wallace. I'll move on as Councillor Wallace is only here as an Electoral Division member today. Uh, Councillor Hurd. Good morning, John Hurd, Councillor for Camborne Pendorvis Division. Councillor Kachmarek. Uh, Mark Katz, Mark Colma Councillor for Kaharik, Gwanap and Santay. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Good morning. John Martin, Councillor for Helston South. Councillor Nicholas. Good morning. Councillor Sue Nicholas, uh, Councillor Division for Marazine and Peronethno. Councillor Pasco. Good morning, Councillor Lionel Pascoe for Gwynia, Gwydion and St. Earth. Councillor Robinson. Richard Robinson, St. Ives East. Councillor John Thomas. Good morning, Councillor John Thomas, Lanner and Stithians Electoral Division. And Councillor Mike Thomas. Good morning, Councillor Mike Thomas, Halston North Division. Um, I'll just outline which officers are present today. Obviously, there's myself, Angela Saunders. I'm the committee's clerk. Um, we have Ben Kerno from Legal, Hugh Gibbon and Robin Watson from Highways, Nikki Manell, Affordable Housing. Emma Code is the meeting producer today, and the following um, officers are all from Planning. We have Mark Broomhead, Hayley Ray, Peter Gregory, Adam Carlyon, Scott Jenkins, Matthew Stevenson. Mark Ball and Katie Mosley. Thank you, Chairman. Right, uh, thank you. So we're going to agenda item one. That's apologies. Are there any apologies? Uh, no, Chairman. Everybody is present. Right, thank you. With that, we're going to agenda item two. That's declaration of interest. Uh, are there any declarations of interest? 
No, it don't appear to be. But we've gone to agenda item three. That's the minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, I'll go through it page by page. It's quite short. So it's page one, page two, and page three. So uh, would somebody like to move the uh, confirmation of the minutes of the previous meeting? Um, we indicate by the hands. Hands function. Uh, have we got a proposal and seconder, David? <laughs> got loads to choose from, Chairman. We uh, have, right. So first we've, taken, we've, got, we've got a proposal and seconder, so um, all, all those in favour, please show. If you count them okay, Angela? Uh, yes, that's carried. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, anyone against or any abstentions? So, um, right. you, you okay with that, Angela? Yes, thank you. Right, thank you. So, go on to agenda item four. That's application for consideration. Uh, we have eight items for consideration today, and um, the first one is item four one, which is PA nineteen forward slash one zero three eight one Barrett David Wilson Homes. Uh, Hillhead Road, uh, Budok, and they're on pages four to fifty-seven. And I think uh, Scott, you're taking us through that one. Can, can you hear me, Scott? Uh, no, it's Mark Ball. Mark Ball, sorry, I'm on the wrong page. Sorry about that, Mark. Um, right. So uh, you're sharing your screen with us today, are you, Mark? I am. Yes. Yeah. If you just like try that a moment, we can hear you okay. Bear with you one moment. Yeah, we've got that fine. So if, when you're ready, if you'd like to start, Mark. Thank you, Chairman. So this application seeks full planning permission for the erection of 133 dwellings, including 47 affordable homes. That's 35 percent provision with associated access, estate roads, car parking, infrastructure and open space on agricultural land off Hillhead Road to the west of Falmouth. The key issues that need to be considered are suitability of the location of site for residential development, the layout, scale, design, appearance, landscaping and impact on the character of the area, highway and access issues, potential impacts upon neighbour amenity, affordable homes, public open space, education and health infrastructure, ecology, including biodiversity net gain, flood risk and surface water drainage and foul drainage, potential impacts upon a European protected site, archaeology and potential contaminated, potentially contaminated land. The site is located to the west of Falmouth and is currently used for agricultural purposes. The site is not designated for any landscape reason and it's not within a conservation area. So we can see the site here hatched in red. Uh, we have Hillhead Road, which is the yellow road running along the bottom of the site here. And then we have the main area of Falmouth in the bottom right hand corner. And then we have the A39 Penryn Bypass, which is Green Road here. There are several existing dwellings to the north and east. It's these ones up here. We have a covered reservoir and associated infrastructure to the west, which is here. And then, as I say, Hillhead Road runs along the southern boundary here. And there are two public rights away in the vicinity, which are these blue dotted lines here. This aerial photograph shows the context of the site. The site's agricultural land on the edge of Falmouth with existing and proposed residential development to the north, east and south and other agricultural land to the west. So there's the site. We have uh, existing residential development to the north here. Development which is under construction at the moment here. You can see that from the, uh, uh, from the, the a construction activity is taking place here, existing development here, and then we have remaining of the allocated land here, which I'll show in a moment. This is the Falmouth and Penryn strategy map from the Cornwall Site Allocations Development Plan document. So this shows the site allocations and existing commitments for both Falmouth and Penryn. The application site forms part of an allocation identified as FPH3, which is this one here. For residential development intended to provide for the housing needs of Falmouth as set out in the Cornwall local plan. The site has therefore previously been assessed and found to be suitable for residential development in principle. And you can see from here that we have a number of large allocations. This is the application one, which is part of this larger allocation here. This grey area shows uh, a previous commitment, which is currently under construction. 
residential development. So we can see from this that the character of this part of Falmouth is changing uh, as, as more development is, will, is and will be taking place in this area. This just shows the allocation of FPH3 within the site allocations DPD and the application site comprises the westernmost field of the allocated land. So that's this field here. The FPH3 allocation covers an area of approximately 8.8 .8 hectares. So that's the whole of the red line area you see there. Uh, and it's intended to provide approximately 200 dwellings. The first phase of development in the easternmost part of the allocation, that's these two fields here has relatively recently been completed and that's provided 104 dwellings in total. A second phase on land adjacent to the first phase, which is this field here, is currently under construction and that would deliver a further 37 dwellings. So the current application under consideration today on this part of the site would deliver 133 dwellings. So including the first two phases, the total number of dwellings would therefore be 274, which would exceed the number of dwellings allocated. The remainder of the allocated land is yet to come forward, and um, that's this field here, but that could do so in the future. It's important to note that the total number of dwellings allocated in policy FPH3 is not a ceiling, and the proposal would make an important contribution to meeting the housing needs of Falmouth and meeting the government's objectives of significantly boosting the supply of homes as required by paragraph 59 of the MPPF. Right, turning down to the scheme itself, uh, this is the site layout plan. So. Hillhead Road is running along the bottom of the site here. This is the development currently under construction, Eve Park to the south. And we have existing dwellings up here. And here's the application site. The dwellings will be arranged in a mixture of detached, semi-detached pairs and short terraces, which helps to add variety and visual interest. The dwellings will present active frontages to the road, public roads and the public areas, open spaces and car parking, and they'd all be overlooked appropriately. The dwellings in the southern part of the site will be set back from the boundary with Hillhead Road. So that's these dwellings down here. And there'll be new native tree planting along the boundary and new Cornish hedges will be provided at the new site access in order to help soften the views of the development from the south, including from Hillhead Road. So that's to try and retain some of the rural character along here without having dwellings hard up against the back edge of the road. So there'll be additional planting along here, reinforcing the hedgerows. And that will help to, help to maintain a sense of openness uh, from Hillhead Road, including this area of open space here, the dwelling set back from that. The affordable homes will be appropriately distributed across the site. So there'll be, as I said, there'll be 47 affordable homes, which equates to 35% affordable housing, and that's policy compliant. The affordable homes will be split between 33 affordable rents and 14 shared ownership. And that's in line with the required 70-30 tenure split. Public open space would include a local equipped area of play, and that's in this area here. Each dwelling would have its own private garden. And there'll be buffer zones provided around the site boundaries uh, and maybe reinforced with additional planting in order to help soften the visual impact of the development and for ecological reasons. We can see those around the edges of the site here. Street line with large canopy trees which runs north south through the site, which is this one here. We can see the, those trees indicated in green here. Uh, they would help to reduce the landscape impact of the development in longer distance views from the east and that was done in order to address the concerns that were raised by the landscape officer. And the landscape officer is now happy with the scheme uh, with the introduction of these trees here and the additional planting which will be taking place around the site boundaries. There'll be adequate separation distance between the proposed dwellings in the northern part of the site and the existing, uh, existing dwellings to the north, so that's these existing dwellings here adequate separation provided along here and reinforcement of the boundary treatments along here, um, which would uh, ensure there'd be no adverse impacts upon these neighbours. Now the next two slides show a selection of the elevations of some of the various house types that are proposed. It's not all of them, it's just to give an indication of, um, uh, of what, they would, uh, what they would look like. So the design and appearance of the dwellings is traditional and to some degree seeks to reflect the local vernacular, including that found in the Eve Park development, which is currently under construction to the south in terms of their form, style and appearance. So there's a variety of house types that help to add visual interest across the development. The palette of material finishes will include rough cast render, natural stone, slate tile hanging and warm golden buff brick. Roofs will be covered in dark grey slate effect tiles and terracotta or grey ridge tiles. The design and appearance of dwellings is considered to be appropriate in this context. There's just some others there to give you an indication of what they'll look like. And then we have some example street scenes just to show them in context and you can see here we have um, a variety of materials, uh, a variety of orientation of dwellings uh, fronting the public roads and public areas and uh, they do uh, step down the site appropriately following the topography. 
Now, uh, we had a number of objections from both from Budock Parish Council and Penryn uh, Town Council regarding the access arrangements. So I'll just talk about those to explain exactly what is being done there. Uh, the new, a new vehicular and pedestrian access will be formed onto Hillhead Road in this position here. So we have the application site here, Hillhead Road here, Kagiliak Road here. That's the estate Eve Park currently under construction. So new access being formed in this position here. This would require the removal of a length of existing hedge on the southern boundary in order to provide the visibility displays. But there'll be new Cornish hedges which will be provided to replace what will be lost and to reinforce local distinctiveness. So they would run inside the site access here. A new pedestrian footbay would be provided along part of the site frontage, linking the access with the new crossing point on Hillhead Road. So along the site frontage here will be a new footway. There'll be a crossing point in this position here to enable people to cross the road to another new section of footway, which will be provided along here onto Kagiliak Road. Upon completion of the Eve Park development into the south, there would also be an alternative pedestrian route into Falmouth from, through that development. So people could come out here, cross the road, and then come down through the Eve Park development here as an alternative route into town. The highways officer has no objections to the proposed access arrangements and considers that the local road network is capable of accommodating the extra traffic generated without resulting in undue operational or safety problems. Now, this slide shows the proposed off-site highway uh, footway improvements on Kagiliak Road. So here's the junction of Hillhead and Kagiliak Road at this point here. So the existing residential development here. This field is currently under construction residential development. So this is the stretch of new footway which will be provided linking in here, along here to the existing footway which is which stops in this position here. Now this would ensure that there's a safe pedestrian access provided to link the development with the existing pedestrian infrastructure and thereby allow safe access into Falmouth. The provision of the new footway on the south side of Kigiliak Road would result in the narrowing of the carriageway for a length of approximately 60 metres. Uh, this would require the introduction of an informal priority working to allow vehicles to pass along this stretch of road. There would also be other alterations to the junction of Kigiliak Road with Hillhead Road in order to slow traffic on approach to priority working. And the highways officer considers that this highway design is acceptable. Uh, quickly run through some photos. So this is a um, uh, sort of set of photos showing a uh, best view I can get of the whole application site. So we have the, the um, western site boundary here, the northern site boundary along here with the existing dwellings behind. And then we have the eastern site boundary here. So you can see that it's an elevated site with, with good views looking out to the east. These uh, photos show the northern boundary. So we can see the dwellings beyond here. You can see the existing hedge, which is in the neighbour's control along here. And then these trees here are these ones at the top here, screening that property. All that will be retained and it's all in the control of these neighbouring properties. And then this boundary will be reinforced with additional planting along here as part of the uh, ecological buffer zone, uh, which would also help to provide screening uh, of views from these dwellings here. And this just shows Hillhead Road where the proposed site access will be. This is looking down towards the Hillhead uh, Kigiliak Road Junction, which is down here. So it's parts of this section of hedge which will need to be removed in order to provide the new footway along here and visibility displays. And this bottom photo is looking in the opposite direction. So the new access will be formed approximately in this position here. This section of hedge will need to be removed with new hedging provided inside in order to provide adequate visibility displays along here. And this shows the junction of Kigiliak Road with Hillhead Road. So we have the application site is behind this hedge over here. So we have new footway provided along here. And then that's the opposite the view down Kigiliak Road. So we'd have a new section of footway provided along here. This is looking in the opposite direction towards the junction with Hillhead Road. So the existing footway stops here. You have a new section of footway along the road here. And then priority working along here so the cars can pass. Now, I draw members' attention to the update sheet. Uh, it's mercifully short. Um, there's the council's ecologist has advised that the required financial contribution towards biodiversity offsetting given in the main report is incorrect. The correct contribution should be forty thousand four hundred and thirty-seven pounds and thirty-nine pence, which the applicant has agreed to pay in full. And there's also a required amendment to condition eight set out in the main report. Uh, that's to reflect the fact that the biodiversity offsetting contribution would be secured via the section 106 and there's also not a requirement for the applicant to identify alternative sites where the contribution could be spent. Um, so the amended condition is set out in the recommendation in the update sheet. So this is the balance of considerations then. 
site forms part of a larger allocation for residential development in the site allocations development plan document to meet the housing needs of Falmouth as set out in the local plan and it's therefore previously been assessed and found suitable for residential development in principle. The layout, scale, appearance and landscaping of the development is considered to be good quality and the scheme will be appropriate in terms of the character of the area and will ensure that any visual and landscape impact will be minimised. The means of access is considered to be acceptable and the increased traffic movements associated with the development will be able to be accommodated by the local highway network without resulting in undue operational or safety issues. The proposed off-site highway works will ensure that safe and suitable pedestrian access will be provided. The affordable homes and on-site public open space provision would meet the requirements of the planning policies and their important public benefits of the scheme. <clears throat> there will be financial contributions towards education infrastructure, health infrastructure, transport infrastructure and towards mitigating recreational impacts upon the Fallon Health of SAC in accordance with the requirements of the development plan. There will be no material adverse impacts upon amenities of either existing neighbours, land uses or prospective occupiers of the dwellings. Development would result in the loss of a small amount of agricultural land, but the benefits of that uh, of the development would outweigh that loss. And any adverse impacts upon ecology would be mitigated, and a biodiversity net gain would be achieved. However, the on-site biodiversity net gain is less than the 10% requirement in the council's DPD. But in order to address that shortfall, uh, financial contribution will be secured in order to create compensatory, compensatory biodiversity units on separate land to the application site. So finally, the recommendation is to approve subject to the signing of the Section 106 planning obligation and subject to conditions as set out in the main report and the update sheet. Thank you, Chairman. Impact by ecology was mitigated and a biodiversity net gain would be achieved. However, the on-site biodiversity net gain is less than 10% requirement in the council. Yeah. Uh, uh, right, sorry, I think so must have live stream on then. But uh, thank you for that, Mark. Uh, we, we have got speakers on on uh, this one, and the first one is Councillor John Langan of uh, Penryn Town Council. Uh, can you hear me, Councillor Langan? Uh, Chairman, it's Emma Code meeting producer. Um, I've just made contact with Councillor Langan. Unfortunately, he's unable to attend today to speak on behalf of Penryn Town Council, and he was going to find an alternative representative, but he hasn't. One hasn't come forward yet. So, do you want to move on to the next speaker from Budock Parish Council? Yeah, that's uh, Councillor Malcolm Bennett. Uh, Councillor Bennett, can you hear me? Chairman, I've had to mute the uh, public speaker, so if he could press star six on his telephone to unmute. Okay, can you hear us now, uh, Councillor Bennett? Hear me now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, morning, Councillor Bennett. Um, Good morning. Morning. Uh, welcome to the meeting. Um, usual format, you, you'll have three minutes to remind you when it's 30 seconds to go and the time will start once you're comfortable and start speaking. So over to you. OK, uh, good morning. My name is Malcolm Bennett, Buda Parish Council. Buda Parish Council has registered support of the development, which in principle we continue. Where we do take issue is the total lack of an overview of the road network to which this development connects. Pedestrian access is hugely concerning, as is ne the inevitable congestion. Hillhead Road, Kergiliak and Kergiliak Road are the main link roads to Mornan Smith, Constantine, Traverva and beyond. This is the preferred route for coaches travelling to Treba and Glendurgan Gardens. The OTS main coach depot is located at La Mamba, as is the West Country Fruits, Fruits Distribution Centre. This alone presents an enormous strain on the traffic flow on a rural road, but in particular the area around the junction to Kergiliak Road and Hillhead Road. The further narrowing of Kergiliak Road by the proposed construction of a 1.5 metre pavement is baffling. There are no obvious passing places for large vehicles on Hillhead Road or Kagiliak Road. Emergency vehicles will not be able to pass and will be caught up in a subsequent congestion. Hillhead Road currently has three major developments either in the planning or the construction stage. Bureau Parish Council has consistently raised the issue of a, la of a lack of a traffic management plan. Currently decisions are made on an individual basis we contend that the provision of a joined up approach is crucial. The approach to Penbethan from a southwesterly direction is on a long bend. The national speed limit applies and continues downhill head road, yet no reduction in the speed limit is proposed. 
we argue that this is a serious omission. Thank you very much. That is my contribution. Thank you, Councillor Bennett. If you can just wait a moment to see if we've got any questions for you from members. Uh, Thank you very much. Has any, has any of the members got a question for Councillor Bennett? D David, have you got any shown? No, don't, don't appear to be any questions. Um, so. Chairman, it's Angela, De uh, Democratic Services. Councillor Nicholas has got her hand up. She has. Right, uh, Councillor Nicholas. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, <clears throat> could I just ask, have at any time the council been involved with um, any negotiations or discussions with the developer about the traffic management plans? Not, not as such. We were concerned about the positioning of the entrance, but as regards uh, the traffic management out on the uh, highway, we have not been involved in that. The concern really, in a sense, is that there are so many developments taking place in such a very small area that um, no overall thought has been put into how that traffic is managed. Uh, so you've got in that site, you've got 133 houses which are going to um, be exiting onto that road. Um, and the, the sheer narrowness of the road in, in both directions and the junction to Kirkiliak Road all create a huge congestion problem and that's what we're very concerned about. Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, were there any other questions for Councillor Bennett? No, right, um, I can't do any, Chairman. No, thank you, David. Uh, thank you very much for attending the meeting this morning, Councillor Bennett. Thank you. Um, thank you. So, we, we go on to our um, next speaker, and that's uh, Councillor Alan Jewell of Falmouth Town Council. Uh, are you there, Alan? Good morning, Chairman. Yes, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I'm here fine. Okay, uh, yes. The usual, usual format would be three minutes. We'll remind you if you're still talking when it's 30 seconds to go, and time will start from when you start speaking. Okay, thank you much, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'm talking to you on behalf, I, I am the Chairman of Fowler Town Council on the planning committee and we've got the views very similar to what the previous speaker said. Uh, we're very concerned about the impact on the area, especially the uh, the road junction. Like you say, the road junction is going to be a nightmare by making that road narrow. The pavement is going to have complete chaos in the traffic area. Um, the actual schools, uh, the doctor's surgeries are all nearly at capacity. Um, and as Mark Ball said, this area was specifically meant to be for 200 houses. We're nearly up to 274 already with another uh, planning coming in on uh, Cornwall housing. So that could put up to 300 houses. So you're going to have 150% housing on a, what should have been just a 200 housing development area. So overall, the whole area has been completely flooded with applications. We've got 470 houses in the Eve Park, this proposal and the Barrett home down at Union Corner. And they're, they're getting away with nearly double the amount of houses which are meant to be allocated. So the whole infrastructure in Falmouth is creaking. They look to us as a Falmouth town for their services, schools, hospitals, doctor's surgeries. And we just think that it's just too much too early. This this DPD is meant to be for housing up to 2030. We're now in 2020. I think this is a premature application. And I think until the infrastructure is sorted out in regards to the Kogulik Junction, perhaps a huge roundabout for future development in, in time. But at the moment, we just cannot cope with any more future development on this scale because, what, like I said earlier, this was only meant to be proposed for 200 houses and we're, and we're already up to nearly 274. So you can see what's happening. We have the same years ago, the development behind Swampool, when SNW had permission for 67 houses, Wayne Holmes took it on in the late 80s, and now there's 400 houses. So this is what happens. So we just think it's too much too soon and just let things settle down. And then perhaps by the end of the DPD allocation time, the late 2020s, Perhaps this development could come online, but at the moment we think it's premature. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Well, thank you. If you could just hang on, see if there are any questions. Uh, have, have you got any hands up, uh, David? No, Chairman. No, right. Uh, th thank you very much for attending, Councillor Jewell. No problem, thank you. All right, so uh, we go on to the next speaker, and it's Mr. David Matthews. Uh, are you there, Mr. Matthews? Uh, yes, I am. Yeah, good, good morning, and thank you for attending the meeting. 
Um, it's the usual thing. It'll be three minutes. Remind you when it's got 30 seconds to go. So your time will start when you start speaking. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Matthews. It's Angela Saunders, the committee's clerk, and we're ready for you to start speaking. No problem. Thank you. Apologies. Um, good, good, good morning, members, Chairman. My name is David Matthews. I'm Land Director for Exeter Division of Barrett David Wilson. Uh, first off, just a brief about uh, intro about Barrett David Wilson. We're a national based HBF five star house builder with a regional office in Exeter. We have notable experience in Cornwall. Um, and have a notable number of outlets and programme ones over the next five years. Oh, I can hear myself. Yeah. Um, uh, I'd just like to thank you. Mr. Um, Mr. Matthews, I think if you've got live stream on, if you could fix that off, uh, turn that off, and then perhaps we start again. Yeah, no problems at all. Yeah, that's switch, switch, switched off. Apologies to everybody. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, if we start again, we'll start the time again. Okay, thank you. Um, good morning, members, Chairman. My name is David Matthews and I'm Land Director for the Exeter Division of Barrett David Wilson. First off, just like to introduce Barrett David Wilson. We are a national five star HBF house builder with a regional office in Exeter. We have notable experience in Cornwall and have a number of outlets and programmed ones in the next five years. And pandemic aside, are intending on to commit notable investments in the county. We also employ and seek to actively place local trade and subcontract orders with local business. I'd like to thank the officer for his report this morning, which is a fair reflection of the position we find ourselves in. While submitted in the pandemic, I would like to offer my thanks to Mark Ball, Louise Wood and officers at Cornwall Council. We have all had to adjust in this new world, but ultimately the outcome presented to you today reflects a collaborative and engaged conclusion. We never wish to pursue appeals and our target is always approval following recommendation. It's therefore testament to the teams involved that you are presented a planning application in detailed form that carries limited local objection and importantly, no technical objection from any of your statutory consultees and importantly, has an officer's recommendation to approve. I'd just like to touch on a few of the issues that have been raised. The first one being highways. We've worked extensively and openly with a shared objective on the issue with road safety audits being carried out to the highways department satisfaction. This is included both vehicular and pedestrian linkages with both temporary and permanent solutions agreed for connectivity, as outlined. Our expert consultants fostered a good working relationship with offices and the conclusion reached of an amalgam of highways work, on-site highways works and substantial contribution are the outcome that resulted in your highways department offering no technical objection. We share the view that mitigation is required and the impact of the development we feel is achieved. Parking is a fraction under 200 percent with the consideration of one bed pulling this down and a travel place, a travel plan will be in place and notable contribution has been requested and agreed as part of the offsite highways improvements. Landscaping, visual impacts and design has evolved from that submitted and has resulted in the loss of units and the increase in landscaping. This has been due to the direct involvement of the council's officer and we accept this created a more appealing layout, which is more landscaping led and less visually intrusive. These proactive inputs from your officer have resulted in no objection. The units are well and sympathetically designed to consider the landscaping and we look forward to this site being presented. Again, your officer raises the enclosed comment which we feel is prevalent. Overall, because of the good design and appearance of the dwellings and appropriate landscaping on the site, it is considered there is no significant adverse impact on the character or appearance of the area. I can also comment that we've addressed the reasons made in the representations. Affordable and open market housing is in line with policy and will deliver much needed investment and the units will be built to parcel building regulations, therefore considering the challenge new housing has on the environment. In conclusion, I request you endorse your officer's recommendation to reiterate the proposal as no statutory objection and it would be this business's ambition to commence this site as soon as practical, delivering such notable contributions towards education, health, highways, infrastructure. That's three minutes, Right, um, that, that's time, Mr. Matthews. Thank you. If you could just wait, just see if any of the members have got any questions for you. Uh, no, are there any, David? Uh, no, Chairman. No. Right. Um, thank you, Mr. Matthews, for attending the meeting today. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, um, with, with that, um,
we go on to the divisional member, which is Councillor John Bastin. Morning, John. Morning. Um, yeah. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, uh, at sorry. five minutes, we'll, if you're still going at five minutes, we, we will be asking you to wind up. So <laughs> right. thank you very much. Um, I've brought this to committee to underline the complete lack of joined up thinking, read the strategic provision for highway infrastructure to three very close developments in a rural Kugalik area. It's a mystery to me why it ever ended up on the DPD, bearing in mind it's very, very limited accessibility. As mentioned, the area is now being reviewed for development by three developers, Persimmon, who are already building out a potential of 300 houses, Barrett's, who are looking to build 133 houses, and Coastline Homes, who are looking to build 37 houses, a total of 470 houses that could be feeding vehicles onto this rural narrow road. Plus, of course, the, the, the extra that Mr. Ball mentioned could possibly be happening if the at the Barrett site expanded. The key issue is that each application is being viewed as a standalone item and all the highway arrangements for each may well seem workable. Once one is laid over the other, it is clear that the total chaos would result. All three need to be integrated so that you have a real view of what the traffic situation would look like. As we've heard from Councillor Bennett, that the load on both these roads is very high. This includes heavy transport in lorries and coaches, but also farm tractors and trailers use this road on a regular basis. Once you turn left and leave the Kagillic Road Junction into Hillhead Road, you are committed. You just don't know what you're going to meet around each corner. Sorry. Kagillic Road is even worse with no passing places and you either reverse back into the nearest driveway which may or may not be available, or to the junction you entered on. The proposal of a footway in this application would further narrow Kigalik Road and lead to face-to-face -face confrontation, especially for larger vehicles less able to reverse. This could cause traffic very rapidly to build up to a standstill on the Union Corner roundabout, which is the main feed roundabout into Falmouth. The access to the site also raises concern being very close to a double bend with traffic traveling at national speed limits. Incidentally, uh, incidents have occurred here in the past when vehicles leaving the bend on a, on a wide bend have met vehicles coming the other way, having head on collisions. Pedestrian access to Penryn is non-existent and the main route to Penryn, the nearest town, would be a long and very hazardous single carriageway with vehicles continuing to vie for space to touch each other. I noticed that um, Mr. Ball mentioned Falmouth for accessibility, but actually Penryn is the nearest town and it would make great sense for people to walk there. Bottom line, we have a situation where a pre-COVID situation, we would have had a site visit perhaps. Bearing in mind though, the issues that both Councillor Bennett and myself have raised I would respectfully ask the committee to defer this application until a realistic view on how congestion on both Hillhead Kugillic Junction and the Union Corner Roundabout can be avoided. Also, how pedestrian access to both Falmouth and Penryn can safely be provided. Also, and finally, possibly a reduction in speed limit could be introduced from the development area along Hillhead Road and into Eastwood Road, which is the bottom road in Penryn, to Penryn Bridge, to ensure that highway are both safe for pedestrians and vehicles. Thank you, Chair. Right, thank you. Uh, are, are there any questions for um, Councillor Bastin? Uh, no, Chairman. No. Chairman, I think Mark Ball is sharing his screen. Sorry, apologies. Yeah. Right, thank you. That solves that one. Right, um, just double check. There are no questions for Councillor Bastin. Right, so we we move on. Are there any questions from members for officers? Uh, a question, Councillor Duffin, Chairman. Yeah, Councillor Duffin. Thank you. Uh, I've got two questions, please. Um, the first one is: I think we all desperately need some clarity on highways, um, the accumulative effect of uh, all the schemes coming forward um and the footway 
Um, so that would be my my first question. Um, my second question is on the density. Um, we've heard that the whole site was meant to be 200 and, you know, two parts have come forward and they're more than the 200. So my question is, um, is the point of having the density in the first place so that we have an improved living environment? And if it comes forward in this way in parcels, and increases the density, does that then mean our plans that we wanted for this better living environment um, are no longer able to happen? Will it have a detrimental effect on the um, the proposals? Thank you. Yeah, uh, Mr. Brume, could you take those or delegate them? Yeah, um, if, if I uh, delegate the highways question to Hugh Gibbon, um, Mark Ball will answer the uh, density. Right, thank you. Um, morning, uh, regarding the highways, uh, obviously this is an allocated site, um, had to take into account pedestrian access uh, particularly uh, as, a, as a concern. Um, there is a priority working and in for more priority work. So, um, and the junction between Kigiliak Road and Hillhead has been uh, traffic capacity modelled, taking into account the other developments and the potential increase in traffic over time. And uh, the figures are shown as acceptable. It, there is noted that West Country, land, um, West Country Food and OTS do use this route. Um, I know this route well, uh, living in the vicinity. So yes, it is acknowledged there are large buses and uh, HGVs that go down the Kigiliak. Obviously, some of the concern has been about the narrowness of Kogiliak. Uh, this is uh, where the two way working Well, obviously with a single way working, there won't be that that squeeze to get a cars past a, uh, a bus or a HGV. The priority working has been approved as part of the development there of 37 dwellings. Um, so this is using um, the pedestrian facility that these two developments will well, that that 37 house development needs to provide and gives a route to um, Falmouth School and the facilities in, in Falmouth. So yes, there will be some um, congestion with the priority working, but it's been extensively considered by the safety auditors. <coughs> they deem it to be acceptable. Uh, with the pedestrian route through to that um, priority working, we can continue it to the facilities as outlined and the speed limit issue on the approach. So the speed, it was a speed survey submitted as part of the application. Obviously the torturous route to a certain degree keeps speeds low, um, but the lack of uh, frontage development may prevent a 30 mile an hour speed limit being appropriate, but uh, we could use the, uh, the contribution uh, for the wider things as part of a consult uh, consultation and consideration of that. Um, so, but the visibility display was extended from the original um, proposal um, to take into account the approach speeds uh, and the fact that there are the bends there as outlined by the member. Um, but so there's uh, hopefully a view for the first point. I'll have to go back to Mark uh, for the second point. Uh, over to you, Mark. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, I mean, the. Councillor Duffin is correct. The um, the total allocation is for 200 dwellings. The uh, as as it stands, the there are 274 uh, dwellings in total. If you take into account this scheme, which is being proposed uh, today, which is 133 dwellings. So there's um, uh, the existing consent on uh, the first phase of this development, um, which was um, just bear with me a moment. I'll just get the correct presentation up. struggling to get that one up. Um, the, there's no upper, there's no ceiling to the total number of dwellings um, set in the uh, in the allocations DPD. So um, provided the development can achieve a suitable development on the site without any adverse impacts in terms of the environment, in, in terms of um, social, economic, and environmental impacts, then uh, then the development will be considered acceptable. And we've made that assessment. We've sought uh, amendments to the scheme, which has involved a 
a small reduction in, in the density of the development um, with appropriate uh, additional landscaping around the site. So it's achieved uh, a suitable scheme in, in, in terms of the layout and the design and the appearance and the impact on the character of the area. Um, and as, as Hugh has just said there, in terms of the impact on the highways, that has been assessed. And uh, despite the increase in the number of dwellings over and above uh, what, what was allocated here, um, this scheme does achieve a, a safe and suitable access. And um, that's the conclusion that has been reached. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, I think there's some other questions, David, if we take your list as they come. Right. The first one's Councillor Bastin. Right, over to you, John. Oops. Right, thank you, Chair. Uh, just for clarity, can I, can I, well, two questions, please. Can I ask Hugh to explain what he means is happening on Kogelic Road? Because he seemed to be suggesting it would be a one-way system. Yeah, can you answer that one, Hugh, please? <coughs> Uh, yes, the there is a a, sh a sec short section where only one vehicle will be able to pass to allow the uh, <coughs> footway to be provided on the southern side of Kigiliak. So, so, so sorry, that's not going to be a one-way system, but you're still going to be vying for space. It's a case of it's an informal priority work, and so whoever really gets to the start point first will have priority through the section. So obviously, one way would imply. I think you're sort of asking if it's a one-way priority. It's not a one-way priority. It's an informal priority. Um, so whoever arrives at this the narrow section first uh, will be able to proceed. Right. So thank you. And, and Mark, could could you put up a, a a drawing showing us the three developments that have been mentioned? Currently, we're kind of homing in on the Barrett's one, but I want to see the the, the Cornwall Homes one and Persimmon all in to show how much that's going to influence Hillhead Road. Certainly, just bear with me, I'll share my screen. There we are. So this shows the entire allocation. So this is the application site here. Phase one, which has been completed, is these two fields here. So that's that's been completed and is occupied. The 37 homes, uh, which is currently under construction, which is in this field here. So those that's how it relates in terms of the whole allocation. I, I'm sorry, to the south of that, we've got the persimmon development. That's correct, yeah. So if I go so, to, um, I think, back to this slide here. This grey area here, that shows the site which is currently under construction by Persimmon, the Eve Park development. Sure. Lovely. Thanks very much. Thank you, Chair. Right. Uh, next figure is David. Uh, Councillor Nicholas. Or well, question, it should be. <laughs> yeah, thank you um, for that. Uh, yeah, my concern is about this highways and it doesn't seem, or it doesn't feel that a proper comprehensive review of all the traffic and all the developments has been really looked into. Um, has this also been discussed with um, Cormac's uh, regional uh, or area managers? Because it just feels that this has all been um, put together. So I want to know if that's been um, a, a discussion that's taken place and whether there is a, a proper comprehensive traffic review that's being done because of the cumulative impact. The other thing that concerns me is about the biodiversity and the density. Um, biodiversity is saying that there's going to be money put aside for off-site. Um, you know, I'm sorry, but I think if you're going to do biodiversity, it should be on the site that it's uh, applying to. And so the density, um, as Joyce has already um, suggested, needs to be looked at in terms of um, healthy and well-being living areas for people to residents in so could that has that been looked at? Um, Mr Brumet could you answer that or delegate it? Yeah uh, I, I think again uh, the highways one can be dealt with by here um, Mark Ball will deal with the um, density. Uh, I'm not sure if the highway manager is aware of the site I haven't spoken directly from uh, I don't recall speaking directly about that the all the developments, obviously the cumulative impact has been considered in terms of the capacity modelling to ensure that the junction between Kigiliak and Hillhead uh, can operate efficiently. Uh, obviously the priority working has previously been um, agreed as part of the consent for the 37 dwellings. Uh, so 
but yes, yeah, so um, the impact, obviously the roundabout on Union Corner is, is designed to take all the uh, allocated developments um, and that was why it's relatively large. Um, so that's that's been in consideration as well. Uh, Mark. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, uh, the density has been, uh, this has been considered, it's an important issue uh, in terms of biodiversity. Um, there has been a reduction in the number of dwellings overall, so a reduction in only five dwellings, but it has been reduced in order to try and improve the biodiversity that's achievable on site. Um, we do have buffer zones that, uh, around the site boundaries, additional open space in this area here, um, and uh, that has provided uh, an element of on-site uh, biodiversity net gain, but it the developer has not been able to achieve that in full. Um, so in accordance with the emerging guidance um, for biodiversity net gain that the council is producing, uh, they're providing the, uh, they're offsetting that through the provision of a financial contribution um, and that's set out in the update sheet. So uh, in short, yes, I mean, the, we have attempted to get a reduction in the density of development in order to provide more habitat on site, um, so they, but they've not achieved the full 10% on site, hence the, the requirement for the off-site contribution. But this, this, is, this does represent a significant improvement over the original scheme as submitted. Uh, there's been a lot of work that's been done with uh, planning officers and, and ecologists in order to achieve that, uh, that increase, and we have seen a significant uplift in terms of what's, what's achieved on site. Thank you. Can I just come back on that? That's my concern is where does that money go off site? Um, yeah, you, you, you can take that in committee to. Um, OK. Yeah. Right. Um, next speaker is Councillor Biggs, Chairman. Yeah, Councillor Biggs. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, my question is also about um, the traffic um, and some of it's already been answered because um, I was going to ask about the the future growth as part of the traffic audit, which we've heard reference to. Um, but I would like just to press the point on the question of traffic modelling, um, just to set the scene. Um, some years ago, we had a four million pound uplift on the Chiverton Cross roundabout. Um, I thought that the they got it hopelessly wrong. Um, I queried with the main contractor just after they finished it. To their credit, they said they'd look at it. Uh, came back, agreed that they got it wrong, um, and then changed um, the lane marking, the eastbound lane marking for off the A30. And when I said to them, why has it, it gone so badly wrong? Um, they came back and said to me, well, traffic modelling is not an exact science. Um, and I just wonder if our officers would agree it's not an exact science. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Brumad, or do you want to delegate that one? Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, if Hugh can answer that one, please. So, obviously, anything like traffic modelling depends on what the information put in to get the results coming out. There is an element of human behaviour which is uh, difficult to always um, forecast. The, the, obviously, it's quite complex um, calculations. It's the best sort of facility we have. It's in it's industry standard, um, and it's 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 commonly accepted. Yes, there are times when it doesn't always get it right. Chiverton roundabout is obviously highways England. It's a very complex roundabout. There's there's a different type of modelling they use there. They use micro simulation from from recall, but uh, it's it's yeah uh, yeah there are obviously challenges to it and but it's the best we it's the best sort of facility we've got to to show um that it works there is a 15 percent variation sort of a degree of accuracy commonly so you um on the figures you go up to if it goes up to 80, if it goes past 85 percent of its capacity then there is concerns what's been submitted is shows uh, below 80 percent um, capacity on uh, coming out of Kigiliak onto Hillhead. Um, so it, yeah, so that, I hope that hope helps to answer the question. Thank you. Um, next question you got, David. Uh, Councillor Mike Thomas. Yeah, uh, over to Councillor Thomas. Uh, thank you very much, to Mr Chair. Two, two questions. One again, highways uh, to Hugh. Uh, the 60 metre single track uh, priority it's, it's quite a long one and uh, there are other, others in the area, uh, Nape, for example, which is much, much smaller, I think. 
um, has an alternative be considered to the to this because it does as for other councils indicated suggest there might be slight issues there so is there an alternative to that and my second question is about materials uh, it's on page nine and ten or sorry frames nine and ten there's uh, a whole collection of different materials referenced by the officer will this be spread evenly for example will the rendering rough rendering be uh, so the, 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 a percentage or will it be equally uh, laid out? Mr. Broomhead, do you want to delegate again? Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, um, obviously, if Hugh can answer the first one again, Mark will answer the second one. The priority working uh, has been agreed as part of the consent for the 37 dwellings. Uh, there is a potential that the Persimmons development will provide uh, access um pedestrian access for the site uh, for this proposed site but um due to timing aspects we can't guarantee i can't be in a position to guarantee that pedestrian access will be able to go through um through the persimmons site uh you know in turn because it's it's down to the developer what time how how long they decide to take before they build the route through so this is effectively a fallback that i can be uh can secure by condition and has been accepted <coughs> excuse me as part of the 37 dwellings so ideally uh probably the pedestrian access would be through the persimmon site but without the lack of ability to secure that prior to the uh, this this proposal being built and uh, open to the public and um, this is a sort of effectively a fallback position um as agreed by the 37 dwellings thank you yeah. and mark Yes, in terms of materials, um, I'll show you, go back to the site plan. Uh, there's a mix of materials, as I say, in terms of the, the walls, we're looking at a mix of rough cast render, natural stone and buff brick, which is similar to the Eve Park development, uh, which is recently permitted and to the south mm. of the site. What we can see, the, the render tends to be along the, the, the fronts here, which will be facing the uh, the road. Uh, we have stone on some of the elevations, uh, which is uh, um, where they're at prominent positions where they're highly visible. And the brick tends to be towards the rear, um, rear of the site um, and uh, to the rear of dwellings where it won't be fronting onto the road. Overall, it's, it's very similar to what was approved in the Eve Park development. Um, so there is a mix across the site. They're not all, all provided in one area. It provides helps to provide variety and vision interest throughout the scheme, as opposed to just having a, a sort of monotonous, continuous um, use of one particular material in one particular area. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, David, you got any more speakers? Yes, Councillor Hurd. Yeah, uh, over to you, John. Yeah, I've got two questions. One is, has the highways done a traffic movement assessments on all the sites that are up for development at the moment? And the second one is, could you go back to the picture of the Kukiliak Hill Ed Junction? No, I mean the, the map, sorry, where you've got the pavement in. Yeah, that's that one. If you look at that carefully, if you've got people coming up from Kirkiliak and you've got people waiting at the top of Hillhead, how long is it going to take for Hillhead to block? You'll have one car parked there on the corner. The next car will be blocking everything coming up from Penryn. I think that's a crazy idea and I think you should find some other way around it. But that's a question in a statement. But what are the traffic movements for all the estates? Have they been done? Yeah, Mr. Bruma, do you want to delegate those? If you can answer those questions, please. The, the, the traffic modelling for this application, and as a rule, um, we approach the traffic movements are, we look at the consented, committed developments and potentially the ones as part of the uh, allocation. This one had the consented but the 37 dwellings and the persimmons already been in being built and uh, so that was included. But the, and also we have a traffic growth uh, system the government provides that you can uh, increase the figures. On this, uh, on this uh, 
transport assessment, they put quite high levels of traffic through from the from the proposed development actually, which is a bit higher than we have in Cornwall. So it's quite it's quite robust because of that. Um, there is a potential for some queuing um, in the priority working, uh, but there is a a few meters for vehicles to to, uh, to stop in there. Um, but obviously, as with any priority working, there is potential for some queuing. Um, but I think it's unlikely that it would, it would extend out onto the uh, onto the hillhead. Right, thank you. Uh, have you got any more questions, David? Uh, Councillor Bastin again, John. Yeah, Councillor Bastin. Thank you, Chair. Just well, two, two, two more points. Uh, a little bit following through from what Councillor Hurd has just said, going the other way is the Union Corner roundabout. If it, in a scenario uh, a West Country Fruits lorry was having trouble getting out of the junction, it would be taking up a fair proportion of that pinch point. Traffic would build up very, very quickly onto the roundabout and cause the roundabout itself to stop. This is the uh, Union Corner Road. And the second question, well, well or, 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 so, what, sorry, that map's disappeared now. The, the, there's, just, just for a point of information, which I don't think has been mentioned yet, in that narrow pinch point is actually where Cornwall Housing are thinking, or sorry, Coastline Housing are thinking to put their entrance to their site. So in the middle of that pinch point will be an entrance, which hasn't been mentioned yet. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Mr. Brumer, do you want to yeah, delegate that to you? Yeah, for the uh, highways officer. Thank you, Chairman. The design for the coastline development, there is an access point and it's quite the top end. It's the westerly end of uh, out, just outside of the priority working. That has been taken into account in the uh, road safety audit. So obviously there was a first there was a road safety audit for the priority working as part of the coastline development and obviously we've now got a safety audit um, as part of this. The, the design for the coastline is slightly slightly different uh, because it's got footway on the northern side and the ability to widen the road out to a certain degree although there is a pinch point at the eastern end of the frontage. Um, so whoever comes first, whichever whether it's the 37 dwellings or whether it's it's the, if this development was to get consent, uh, would need to design the access, uh, the development of the priority working would need to be taken into account both developments. Um, the other question was about whether the queuing is some distance away from Union Corner Roundabout. So I think it's unlikely that queuing would, would uh, result in any problems in this priority working because um, it's yeah there's some distance down down the road there I think that was both aspects covered right thank you have you got any more questions David uh, not at the moment chairman no no so oh, yeah, sorry uh, sorry uh councillor Biggs yeah right if um we, we've had one question councillor Biggs if it could be quick I'll take it yeah thank you I am grateful uh, just for clarity what is, is there a difference between a road safety audit and a traffic management plan yeah, go straight to Hugh on that one. Uh, they right. So if you have a tra you have transport assessment, which is which will generally look at um, the capacity modelling and that aspect, and then you have a road safety audit, which considers the safety of alterations to the highway. Um, so they are two separate um, reports. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, right, uh, D David, you got any more questions? No, that's it, Joe. No, right. Uh, has any of the officers got any comments they wish to make? If not, we'll go into the committee and um, over to the committee. So if anybody wants to make any comments and proposals, over to you. Anybody showing, David? Not I. Uh, Councillor Duffin. Yeah, Councillor Duffin. Well, I think we do obviously have concerns and I appreciate the officers taking the time to answer the questions that um, we've put to them and fairly rigorously the last little while. Um, but I, I'd be happy to propose as laid out. I think, um, you know, we've raised the issues we've had questions answered. The highways are definitely something that's being looked at um, and lots of um, you know, officer time has been put into that. Um, I'm obviously not a highways expert, um, so I'm happy to propose as laid out. Yeah, have we got a seconder for that? 
Councillor Nicholas is up to speak next, Chair. Yeah, d d just for, is there a seconder for proposal from Councillor Duffy? No, right. Councillor Robinson, Councillor Robinson is. Yeah, so that's been seconded, yeah. Right, so we, we go on to Councillor Nicholas. Yeah, I, I would absolutely uh, not agree with that. I think um, I don't think that it has um, evidenced enough that there enough consideration has been given to uh, the traffic issues. If we're talking about 470 houses, we're talking about another potential 940 uh, cars and those roads are extremely narrow. I don't agree that it will only cause a little amount of queuing because if you've got um, youngsters being taken to and from school and quite frankly I can't see them walking the distances that have been suggested at the moment um, then I have grave concerns. I also have grave concerns that it appears that actually the area um, highways managers do not seem to have been involved in this at all and they're the ones that usually know where all the major problems are. So on a, a narrow lane um, I don't think this has been considered in full mm. enough to um, provide me with evidence that it is really going to be workable. Well, thank you. Um, David, next speaker. Councillor Hurd. Yeah, Councillor Hurd. Yes, I'm very concerned about the traffic situation here. I understand they're talking about maybe they might be able to redirect the traffic flow. I would recommend that we defer this until they come up with a better traffic management plan. That's all I've got to say on it. Yeah, that that is a um, you, you can put I that forward if, if you want to. Pardon? Uh, you can put that forward, and I'll see. If I you... would put that forward as a deferment, please. Yeah, is there a second for that? Yes, yes, Councillor Thomas. Yeah, do, do you want um, to speak, Councillor Thomas? Yeah, can, hang on a minute. It's Angela from Democratic Services. So, Councillor Hurd has moved as an amendment for the yeah. deferral for the traffic management plan, seconded by Councillor Thomas. Is that right? That, that, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I'm yeah. just taking a second to, yeah. Yeah, so C Councillor Thomas. Yes, I agree fully with what uh, Councillor Hurd has said and Councillor Nicholas. Uh, I, c I can see in principle that this is a development that will go ahead. Uh, I do follow uh, Alan Jewell, Councillor Jewell, uh, the chair rather, of, of the planning committee at Farmers Viewpoint, that it is premature, but uh, I, I, I can see it needs to go ahead. But the current highway arrangement, in my opinion, is is not as good as it could be. Thank you. Um, is there any other speakers, David? No, John. No. So, Angela, I, I would I would take the if if I put it to vote, we've got no other speakers. Uh, I'd take the deferment the amendment for deferment first. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Chairman. Yes. Yeah. Mark Broomhead. Can we? Yeah. Can we have a specific instruction from the the voter um, proposal and second because we don't want to go off and do some work and then that's not what what they were requesting. Right. Um. I'll I'll go to Councillor Hurd and Councillor Thomas and then I'll come back to you, Mark. So Councillor Hurd. Yes, I'm uh, recommending deferment until a, a a plan a traffic plan which is sustainable is comes forward is that suitable yeah. uh your what's your definition of sustainable then well it, it is the the traffic management is acceptable then okay because i don't believe the kirkiliak the top there is going to be acceptable it's going to you're going to have traffic blocking everywhere sorry could i come in chair um it's Matt Stevenson. Um, obviously, I'll have to work with Mark on this. Uh, Mark Ball, that is. Um, obviously, the Kigiliak improvement is also coming forward as part of the coastline scheme anyway. Um, obviously, we could have a look at that again, but this is prioritising pedestrian access over vehicles. The alternative really is not to have that prioritisation, and it would go back to having um, vehicles as the main priority through that section of narrow section of road. Um, is that something that the committee wants us to prioritise over pedestrian access? Because um, that would only seem to be the, the two alternatives on the table. The other issue that's been raised in the, um, the questions um, was over the density and the impact on um, biodiversity on site net gain. 
So again, if we bring this back to committee, would committee be accepting of the amount of on-site net gain and the off-site contribution? Or is that something they wish us to have a look at if the matter is deferred for this highway issue as well? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Hurd, did you want to comment on that? Yes, or, or um, yeah. I, I'm interested in the um, footpath. We need the pedestrian access as well as the traffic movement. So I don't want one to be sacrificed for the other. My deferment is for them to go away with the developers and work out a traffic plan or a road management system and a pedestrian system which is suitable to all the developments taking place. OK, uh, thanks for that clarity. I, I think that's going to be difficult to do. I think it is a matter of prioritising one over the other through this um, section. I think as Hugh has already pointed out, there is a potential for another pedestrian access through the Persimmons estate that is currently being built, but that probably is some way off from fruition. Um, and it is something we can't control through this particular planning permission. Yeah, uh, Matt, I, I, I'd be anxious that if we do defer this, that um, some of the other issues that have been raised, that um, we'll say that they've been accepted by the committee. So did, did you have something in mind, a, a possible sort of um, suggestion of, of wording? Well, well, yes, I mean, I, I've been listening carefully and obviously a lot of questions came out of officers um, and, and the main other issue I, I, that I picked up on was around that density and the impact on the on-site net gain. Um, so if if during your debate, further debate and voting, if, if that's something that members wish us to look at again and discuss again with the, the applicant, then of course we can do that and um, bring that back to committee should, should the matter be deferred. Could you give us some suggested wording on it at this stage? Yeah, sure. I think it's just a matter of um, officers going back to um, the applicant and really seeking the, the net gain all on site rather than some of it being an off site provision. Uh, and obviously that would likely re um, slightly reduce the density further. Yeah. Would you be happy with that, Councillor Hurd? Yes, no problem with that. Yeah, Councillor Thomas, did you want to, sorry, I, I think you wanted to speak, so if you'd like to speak and if, if you, at the end, if you'd indicate if you're happy with, with the wording that we've got just come through there. I've not anything really much to add. I think uh, Councillor Hurd has identified the main issues and uh, I, I'm happy to second. Yeah, OK then. So did, did anybody else want to speak? Not at the moment, Chairman. No. So, um, Matt, perhaps if you could just read out um, the, the proposal as, that, that has been put forward, please. <clears throat> yes, as I understand it, it's um, to go back and check the, the highway situation in particular around the pedestrian and um, traffic movements, um, in particular around the Kigiliak Road um, prioritisation scheme to see if there is an alternative to that. And also members wish us to um, consider the, the density and the impacts of that on the on-site biodiversity net gain um, and achieving policy provision on-site. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, does uh, Councillor Nicholas, did you indicate you wanted to speak? Yes, please, Chairman. I just yeah. think it's really important that the, the highways managers who deal with the other roads and not just site roads actually uh, are brought into that discussion on on the um, traffic flow and, and the traffic systems. And I'm concerned that there is a potential uh, footway, but actually that hasn't come forward yet. So I, I think it's all a bit up in the sky. Yeah, well, we've got, we got the recommendation that we're going to vote on now. So I'll put that to members. It would be the deferment has been read out by Matt. So you'd be voting for um, a deferment and that would be against the recommendation as, as printed in the agenda. So we'll do it by roll call. Um, over to you, Angela. OK, uh, Councillor Biggs. Four. Councillor Code. Councillor Code, you're on mute. Sorry, my um, uh, computer's not as swiftly responding as it should be against. Councillor Duffin. Four. 
Councillor Eakin Smith. Four. Councillor Harding. Four. Councillor Hurd. Four. Councillor Katchmarek. Four. Councillor Martin. Four. Councillor Nicholas. Four. Councillor Pasco. Four. Councillor Robinson. Against. Councillor John Thomas. Four. Councillor Mike Thomas. Four. I'll just count that up a moment. Um, the amendment is carried by 11 votes in favour and two against. We now need to take another vote to make that um, for the to make this this committee's substantive decision. Yeah. So, so um, what what we we'll do is we'll do it by roll call again. So it will be four that if you're in favour of of that recommendation that's been put forward. So over to you, Angela. Councillor Biggs. Four. Councillor Code. Against. Councillor Duffin. Four. Councillor Eakin Smith. Four. Councillor Harding. Four. Councillor Hurd. Four. Councillor Katchmarek. Four. Councillor Martin. Four. Councillor Nicholas. Four. Councillor Pasco. Four. Councillor Robinson. Four. Councillor John Thomas. Four. Councillor Mike Thomas. Four. Chairman, that's been uh, that is the committee's decision for the um, deferral by twelve votes in favour and two against. Right, I thank you. Um, right, with, with that we go on to item four two. That's PA twenty four slash zero five one zero one. Mr. C. Puffett at Belvista Budock. And I think, uh, am I right, Hayley, are you taking that one? Yes, I am, Chairman, yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah, we, we can hear you OK, and uh, if you'd like to share your screen with us. Yeah, that's just loading. Yeah, that, that's fine. So when you're ready, over to you, Hayley. Thank you, Chairman. So this application um, is for modifications to an existing vehicular access, um, also at Hillhead Road at Kogiliak. So the improve the key issues are assessment of highways safety improvements and impact to the character of the area. The location plan shows the application site in red. You'll be familiar because Mark has just presented in this land here. To the north is the town of Penryn and the east is the town of Falmouth. To the south and southwest, Hillhead Road obviously continues down towards the Lamamba Junction. This site plan shows the application site and its setting. Hillhead Road is a classified C road and has a limit of 30 miles per hour. The access currently serves three dwellings and an additional dwelling has been granted at the top. This dwelling will be split into two. This is yet to be built. Um, recently, an application was refused for a dwelling up here. One of the reasons for refusal was highway impact due to the increased vehicle trips and the existing access. This aerial plan shows the existing character of the area and it does include the Union Corner development, which has now been completed over here. This shows the existing visibility for the access. The existing visibility to the north, if you turn left out of the junction, is 12 metres. And the existing visibility to the south, if you turn right, is 33 metres. However, the, vehicle, the manual for streets document states that for a 30 mile per hour road, visibility should be 43 metres. The proposal is to remove a 12 metre section of the existing wall to the north and to reduce a height of six metre to, sorry, reduce the height of a six metre section to 900 mil. No works are proposed to the south wall. The works will increase the visibility visibility were 34 metres to the left or the north and 9 metres to the right. Therefore, the finished visibility displays will provide users with 46 metres to the north and 42 metres to the south of visibility. Due to the topography of site, the existing access is proposed to be widened as this is the lowest level, whereas if we look at point A, that is 3.4 metres and 
C is 2.3 metres and E, the existing access, is 0.45 metres. This photograph shows existing access on Hillhead Road and looks north towards down to Penryn. These photographs show the existing north visibility of 12 metres from the car. Please note that the nose of this van is, is forward the junction and obviously we have a passing vehicle here. And this shows the emerging visibility to the right or south, which shows 33 metres. And also note that the car is also out of the junction again. Due to the nature of the works, four medium sized oak trees will be lost. Um, the tree officer has commented and has no objection to the loss of these trees because of the justification through the poor access. However, it is also worth noting that these trees aren't protected and they do not have a TPO tree preservation order on them. These trees could be felled at any time without requiring permission from the local planning authority. However, the agent has agreed to mitigate the tree loss by planting four Cecil Oak trees. These trees will be sited adjacent to the dwelling Bell Vista, which is at the top of the lane, and this ensures there's no impact to the improved highway safety. These trees have been specified because they are native to Cornwall, provide a good habitat for wildlife and provide good visual interest. This plan shows the evolving character of the area. You'll be familiar here because Mark has just presented this application. Um, we also have another pending application for 37 dwellings reserved matters to the east, so the character is evolving. As a result of these applications, traffic utilising the Hillhead Road area will increase, and this poses a risk for traffic conflict at the existing site entrance. The balance of considerations is the existing access has poor visibility and the improvements will, will enhance highway safety. The existing character will be altered by other development, therefore the harm is limited. The loss of un, four unprotected trees has been mitigated through suitable replacement replanting. Therefore, the recommendation is to approve with conditions. Thank you, Chairman. Right, uh, thank you, Hayley. Um, we, we have got um, speakers on this one. Uh, it's um, Councillor Malcolm Bennett. Uh, are you there, Councillor Bennett? Chairman, it's Emma Code meeting producer. The speaker may wish to press star six to unmute himself. Hello, Councillor Bennett. Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Yeah, good morning again, Councillor Bennett. Um, welcome once again to the committee. Uh, it will be the same format, three minutes, and remind you when it's 30 seconds to go. So once you're ready, just proceed. Thank you very much, Chairman. My name is Malcolm Bennett, Bureau of Parish Council. Bureau of Parish Council is strongly opposed to the loss of the local character as a result of the proposed works. The removal of four oak trees and the hedging and the resultant habitat loss will not result in any meaningful improvement to the access. These are important considerations as they are included in our Emerging Neighbourhood Development Plan, which is in its final stage of acceptance and therefore carries more weight. We contend that the scope of the alterations will not make the entrance any safer as the site lines would need to be greatly increased to achieve that aim. The offer to replant four small sessile oaks in a location well removed from their current location does nothing to lessen the impact of their removal. We bring to your attention the opposing views of the planning officers. The original pre-app advice stated that the application was unlikely to be supported, whereas the current planning officer's opinion disagrees and supports. There are a small number of properties served by this entrance. A recent application to construct a new dwelling included a transport and access report based on the requirements of the National Planning Guidance of 2014 and the National Planning Policy Framework, February 2019. The report stated that over a five-year period, no collisions or injuries were recorded and, that, and concluded that the present access operated safely. Finally, highways are currently undertaking a review of the area, which includes Hill Head Road. Thank you. Right, uh, if you could just hang on, Councillor Bennett, just in case we've got some questions for you. Uh, are, are there any questions for any of the members? 
Uh, you got any no, shout, David? No, John. No. no, okay. Right, uh, so thank you very much for attending the meeting again, Councillor Bennett. And thank you the very much. Uh, next speaker is um, Mr. Puff, uh, Mr. Puffett. Uh, are you there, Mr. Puffett? Chairman, it's Emma Code meeting producer. Mr. Puffett is just about to dial in. Right, thank you. Can you hear me, Mr. Puffett? Mr. Puffett, are you there? Chairman, he's not yet on the line, but I have spoken to him and he is about to dial in. Yeah, OK. Um, Chairman, it's Angela, the committee's clerk. Did you want to hear Councillor Bastin, the electoral division member, before Mr. Puffett, while we wait for him to dial in? I, I think, well, um, Councillor Bastin, would you rather Mr. Uh, Puffett spoke first or are you happy to go ahead? So, uh, John, I was saying, um, yeah, are, you just, happy to, are you happy yes. to go ahead with Mr. Puffett? Well, I, I don't mind either way, really. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I think he's possibly there now. Uh, Mr. Puffett, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I, I can hear you. Uh, good morning, welcome to the meeting. Um, the, it'll be the usual format. Um, you'll have three minutes to speak and we'll remind you or we'll give you a prompt at 30 seconds and the time will start once you start speaking. So uh, once you're ready, just carry on. Thank you. Okay, so can I start talking? Uh, yes, yeah. yeah. Hello, I'd like to thank um, everybody for allowing me to come and speak. Um, and I'm pleased to see that the application does have the support of the tree officer, highways and Cornwall planning. I've lived at Bella Vista for the last four and a half years, and I understand the importance of retaining the countryside and habitat. However, on this occasion, the significant increase in development in the area of Kegiliak has translated into a compelling increase in traffic heading down the hill into Penryn. The main problem is with exiting onto the uh, unlit lane where you have to expose your vehicle halfway across the road, inch by inch, to see vehicles coming up the hill. My biggest concern is not just vehicles, but also cyclists coming down the hill. And by way of coming out of that exit, if uh, the vehicle was to be exposed, uh, if cyclists didn't see or be aware of that exit, then there could be um, an accident occur from that. And my neighbour has, uh, has unfortunately done that, but luckily it didn't result in an accident. And I've also had uh, a number of um, delivery drivers that I've seen, you know, repeat deliveries, just say how difficult it is that they can't actually see down the hill. I hope that the increase in the this, uh, display area would allow to have a better view of the whole um, site on Exton. And also, if you're coming out of the junction, you have to do a three-point turn in the middle of the road to be able to turn left down into Penryn. Um, and, you know, with it being 60 miles an hour, it is potentially dangerous. Uh, that uh, concludes my, uh, uh, my part. Thank you. Right, thank you. If you can just wait a moment to see if any of the members got a question for you. Uh, are, are there any questions, David? Yes, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Nicholas. Yeah, right. Uh, Councillor Nicholas. Thank you, Chairman. Um, and thank you for that, Mr. Parfit. Um, my question really is, um, when you had permission to um, separate the uh, other building in, in that area, um, was there a major concern about the um, entrance at that time and the other one is if you are replanting oaks uh, can you not replant oaks alongside a uh, widened splay rather than further up away from the lane because it is the impact of those oaks on the lane that makes it that countryside lane um yeah so from the uh, the planning to increase that was brought to my attention by uh, a previous pre-application I put in um, and uh, obviously having spoken it through my neighbours getting their support to be able to do that 
Um, the other issue is um, planting the trees uh, in location next to uh, Bella Vista uh, enabled an increase along the length of the trees that are already planted. And um, there wasn't really seen any other area along the, the blue boundary route, which I was asked to put the trees um, that, that would you know, have them put in position, if that makes sense. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, David, you any other questions? Uh, no, Chairman. No. Right. Um, right. Th th thank you very much, Mr. Puffett. And then with that, we go on to the divisional member, which is Councillor Bastin again. Over to you, John. Right. Uh, so, so thank you, Chair. Sorry I dropped out for a moment. I'm not too sure what happened. Um, this, this application is only a few hundred yards from the area discussed uh, a few moments ago, still part of Hillhead Road and many of my comments would still apply in that sense. A few moments of history, Bella Vista was the site of an isolation hospital. Uh, since then, three properties have been built on the site, all using an entrance which has always been there since I was a child. As far as I know, no accidents have ever taken place at this entrance. This would suggest that the access has always provided safe access to the properties that use it. And just interestingly, the, the clerk of Budok Parish Council, when I was the chair of Budok Council, Parish Council, lived there, and I exited and entered that site on many, many occasions without issue. The site entrance seeks to produce, would not, in my view, get any improved visibility. The, the actual um, area would have to be much larger, as Councillor Bennett said. It would, however, destroy many metres of Cornish hedge remove several mature healthy oaks when Cornwall Council has a commitment to climate change. And I, I would challenge that we should be supporting forests for Cornwall, not removing trees. The rural ambience of the narrow lane would be lost for little or no gain. Indeed, it may increase passing traffic speed, allowing passing motorists to see across where the tall Cornish hedge once was. And, and that would be an issue because if you remove that hedge, people wouldn't naturally slow down. They would perhaps think they could see further than they really could. This application offers no safety gain, but does destroy not only mature Cornish trees and Cornish hedge, but also local history. I ask please for members to refuse it. Right, thank you. Um, are there any questions for Councillor Bastin, David? Yes, uh, Councillor Martin. <clears throat> yeah, Councillor Martin. Thank you. Yes, John. Um, do any agricultural vehicles use this lane to uh, to access the the fields around the uh, the, the residents at uh, the back there? Uh, not anymore. They, they they used to, but not uh, well since the, the the development along the side, I suppose. Thank you, John. Thank you. Were, were there any more questions? Uh... No, John. No, right. Thank you. So we go in. Are, are there any questions of the officers? Or have any of the officers got any questions? No. 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 Right. So, so we, we go in the committee then. So, um, if somebody would like to make a comment, um, t take something forward, and eventually bring forward a proposal. Uh, Councillor Kazmarek. Councillor Kazmarek. Thank, Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to support the application. Uh, it is quite clear from the evidence we've seen in front of you. It's difficult to manoeuvre a car out there with without the right visibility. The last application we spoke and, and councillors spoke in depth about the increased traffic along these roads. And because uh, when, when councillor Bastion was younger, um, he, he didn't see that this is a safety issue. I think he's got to accept now that the amount of vehicles using this road, there is a safety issue there. The trees are planted on the hedge. As they get bigger, that hedge will fall down, and so probably will the trees. So <clears> at some stage, uh, they're going to come down. They're going to be replanted, and um, and I think for, for highway safety issues, uh, I think we, we must support this application. Yeah, uh, are you moving that, Councillor Kazmar? Pardon? Are you moving I, that? I'm, I'm, I'm moving that as set out, Chairman. Yeah, is there a secondary for Councillor Kazmar? Yes. Yeah, my hand's up. Yeah, Councillor Robinson, I think. Right. Uh, OK, is there anybody else want to speak, David? Uh, Councillor Code? Yeah. Yeah, just uh, I was going to second that it's, it's to me seems eminently sensible. 
um, and they are taking proper mitigation efforts and are trying to improve road safety. Please um, pass this. Yeah, I think it. Councillor Robinson, sorry, did, did you want to comment or you just seconded it? Yeah, my only comment would be that having voted as we did on the previous um, item, um, it would make no sense whatsoever to um, to refuse this. Right, thank you. Were there any other speakers, David, before I put it to vote? Yes, Councillor Nicholas. Yeah, Councillor Nicholas. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great shame that we're destroying country lanes for the sake of uh, traffic when we're supposed to be encouraging walking and cycling. However, my main concern is that if we are taking down mature oak trees, which form that countryside lane, then the trees that are going to be replanted should be along that splay so that it actually eventually brings it back more to a country lane feel than, than an urban area. Thank you. Right, so uh, any, any other speakers, David? No, Chairman. No, right, so we'll put it to vote. There'll be a roll call, uh -huh. and it's been proposed by Councillor Kazmarek, seconded by Councillor Robinson, and it will be as per agenda, as printed in agenda, so um, it, it will be for approval with the relevant conditions. Uh, over to you, Angela. Councillor Biggs. Four. Councillor Code. Four. Councillor Doffin. Four. Councillor Eakin Smith. Four. Councillor Harding. Four. Councillor Hurd. Four. Councillor Kaczmarek. Four. Councillor Martin. Four. Councillor Nicholas. Four. Councillor Pasco. Four. Councillor Robinson. Four. Councillor John Thomas. Four. Councillor Mike Thomas. Or oh. Chairman, that's been approved unanimously. Right, thank you. So with, with that, we're going to item 4.3, that's PA 24 slash 06529, Ms. Anne, uh, Anne Osborne, land west of Field of Birds, School Lane, Goval, and uh, Adam's taking us through that one. Can you hear me, Adam? Yeah, hi, Chair. Uh, yeah. Are you sharing your screen with us? If yeah, one minute. Um, yeah, that, that's fine. So when you're ready, Adam, over to you. OK, thank you, Chair. OK, good morning, everyone. This is an application for full planning permission for the erection of a house and a garage and associated works in land west of the field of birds off School Lane in Goldwall. So the key issues, which we'll come back to at the end, are whether the site is suitable for a new residential development and whether the proposed development would integrate successfully into the surrounding built and natural environments. So as you can see here, the site is situated off School Lane towards the northern edge of Goldville. Uh, to the southwest, you can see the uh, urban area of Penzance beginning. So Goldville itself is situated quite close to Penzance. Moving in a bit closer, the site outlined in red and to the north, north and south are public footpaths. Uh, the conservation area is off to the uh, off to the east, but quite a distance from the site nonetheless. And here's an aerial photograph. So as you can see, the site is laid predominantly, in fact, almost entirely to grass. Uh, the, the photographs in a second will show you in a bit more detail what the site looks like on the ground. So these are the plans. On the left hand side is the existing site plan. So as you can see, the land is laid to grass. It slopes southward from north to south. Uh, to the northern edge, you can see an area of enclosed land, which we'll come to in the photographs. On the right, you can see the proposed development. So essentially towards the northern boundary, you've got the proposed dwelling and off to the uh, west, you've got a garage set slightly back from the dwelling. Uh, to the southern end, you can see a reconfigured access onto School Lane, uh, onto which would be a sweeping access drive leading to a parking and turning area just to the south of the dwelling. The rest of the land is proposed to be residential curtilage. So these are proposed elevations. So as you can see, it's a two storey dwelling finished entirely using natu uh, natural granite facing on all sides with casement windows for the most part, uh, natural state roof coverings as well. And here are the floor plans. So at ground floor level, you've got the living accommodation and at first floor level, you've got the uh, bedroom accommodation. There's also a section there as well showing uh, the dwelling in terms of head heights as well. Onto the photographs now. So the, the picture central at the top is a view looking north into the site from School Lane. So the dwelling is positioned relatively centrally in that view. 
The bottom left and right is basically looking to the left and right from, from the same viewpoint onto School Lane. Uh, the, the bottom right hand photo, you can just see a glimpse of field of birds. That's the neighbouring dwelling there. And these are the land and structures at the northern end of the site that I mentioned before, the enclosed land. So as you can see, you've got uh, remains of allotments, a small chicken shed, I believe, and some fencing and some uh, low impact fencing as well, which delineates the, this part of the site from the wider field. And this is looking from that area of enclosed land, looking south towards School Lane, just to give you a glimpse looking the other way. You can see the School Lane properties in, in, in the central part of the photograph. So the key issues or the balance of considerations, the proposal would deliver a new family home at the edge of a sustainable settlement. However, in our view, it would substantially extend development into the open countryside without any special justification and would cause harm to the rural and agricultural edge of the settlement. In our view, the environmental harm outweighs the limited economic and social benefits, and thus the development is not considered to be sustainable. The application is therefore recommended for refusal. Uh, I will draw members' attention to the addendum, which contains a further representation of a member of the public regarding the lawful status of the northern section of, of the site, the enclosed land with the chicken shed, etc. We've also got uh, two further comments submitted since that, one from Will Elliott of Penzance Town Council, he confirms the unanimous support of Penzance Town Council. He's pleased to see that the land is being put to good use in a sympathetic and respectful manner. And the proposal is not considered in the Town Council's view to extend into open countryside. The applicant's also been in touch after the, after the addendum to advise that the land seller advised that the, that the access to field through an opening in the hedge next to field of birds where their mother grew fruit and vegetables and kept chickens. She also advises that aerial photography from 2013 shows this access point around three quarters of the, of the way down the hedge. So she's attempting to, uh, to challenge the comments made in the addendum. Uh, that's the end of the presentation, Chair. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Um, we have got speakers on this and the first is Miss Nicola Osborne. Um, Miss Osborne, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Councillor yeah. Arvin. Right, thank you. Yeah, so um, it'll be three minutes and there'll be a prompt when it's 30 seconds to go. So what, once you're ready and you start speaking, your time will go f be taken from there. So once you're ready, you know, please start. Thank you. I'm the applicant, Nicola Osborne, and your report describes my proposal. There are no objections from the consultees. In particular, Penzance Town Council, who know their area and are used to assessing planning applications, consider mine isn't a building in the open countryside. The Cornwall councillor for this ward, Mario Font, agrees that my application is acceptable. There are no objections also from the site's neighbours, several of whom have written in support. There's clear convincing evidence that the site was used for many years in connection with the house next door and some domestic buildings and structures still remain. Along with the previous family member, they state the top was used for horticulture, the art of garden cultivation, growing fruit, vegetables and plants for ornament and fancy. They confirm its past domestic use and two of them have sworn statutory declarations, evidence that can be used in a court of law. Uses of land are frequently lawful despite not having a specific lawfulness certificate and applications are usually determined without needing one. Paragraph 13 of your report notes that they view my proposal as in keeping with the ribbon of housing along School Lane, including the immediately adjoining comparable houses to the east. My application satisfies one of the circumstances for small-scale village housing in Cornwall Local Plan Policy 3.3. It's the redevelopment of previously developed land immediately adjoining a settlement, and the single house I propose is appropriate to the size and role of Goldville, where housing continues to be approved. The part of policy 3.3 I've mentioned doesn't require developments to avoid visually extending development into the open countryside. In fact, as agreed by neighbours, the town council and the ward councillor, my scheme is in keeping with the houses along School Lane of which permission for a new house was granted in 2018. My site is seen only close to in the context of other houses.
because of the particular circumstance at my site, approving my application won't set a precedent for more housing along this side of the school lane. Your report agrees that there are no highways, neighbourlessness or drainage or other technical problems. To sum up, my application is in line with your council's policy for building a house on previously developed land on the edge of a village and it follows the type and pattern of neighbouring housing rather intruding into the open countryside. There's wide range in local support. Please can councillors therefore help me by granting my permission. Thank you for your time. All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Osborne. If you can just wait, just in case we've got some questions for you. Um, David, has anybody indicated that they want to ask a question? No, Chairman, no. No, OK then. Well, th thank you very much for attending this morning, Mr. Osborne. Um, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you. OK, um, goodbye. Uh, um, right, we now go on to um, the divisional member. Um, I, I don't think uh, Councillor Funk is available. Has he issued a statement or anything, Angela? Um, no, I just know that Councillor Funk can't attend today for personal reasons. Yeah, o okay, so that's fine. So we now go to, uh, we move on, and are there any questions of the officers from members? No, uh, have any of the officers got any comments they want to make? So, sorry, David, were there any members wish to speak? To ask a question? No, no, no question. Yeah. Any of the officers have you have got any comments, any further comments you wanted to make before we go into committee? No. Right. So we'll move on into committee and uh, over to you, committee members. Councillor Code. Yeah. <coughs> Councillor Code. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is one of those cases where I disagree with the planning officer's interpretation of the policies and do agree with Penzance Town Council, Councillor Fonk, the applicant and uh, the other people in support of this. I'm looking at um, the map you've provided me with and to me it is it seems absolutely clear that this site, this proposal is a filling in of that little hamlet exactly to the west of Goldville Churchtown. Uh, it just seems so obvious to me that this is a good development, a good proposal and not contrary to those policies that I propose we uh, accept the application. Oh, thank you. Yeah, have we got a seconder for that? Yeah, me again. Yeah, Councillor Robinson. Yeah. Yeah, and again, for all the, all, all the reasons that um, Councillor Code has, has pointed out, I look at the map and I'm seeing a you know, a, a tidiness um, been brought in and, and, and the argumentation to my mind is entirely reasonable. Yeah, well, thank you. Right, did, did any other member wish to speak? No, John. Oh, no, sorry, Councillor yeah. Duffin. And Councillor Nicholas, yeah. I mean, I think my concern would be you can then see that the ribbon development will go all the way along that road. Um, and on page 75, it says, the site falls within a green buffer proposed for the emerging Penzance neighbourhood plan and I know that we're quite hot on allowing green buffers aren't we because otherwise everything just merges into everything um, so I'm not particularly keen on this I have to say. Thank you. Um, Councillor Nicholas. Uh, thank you Chairman, yeah no I agree with um, Councillor Duffin that looks like ribbon development to me and you can see it spreading. That is a greenfield site as far as I can see. Um, so I would not be supporting it. I would be supporting the planning officer. Yeah, right. So um, David, we've got some other speakers come up. I don't know uh, on your list. I don't know whether Councillor Robinson's hand is up from before or you want to speak again. Yeah, I want to just, just uh, comment on the last couple of comments. I mean, a ribbon development, I mean, if, <laughs> What I'm looking at is north, north a, a comparison between north and south of the road at that particular point. And, and to me, um, you know, this is this is not a ribbon development. A ribbon development would be something that's you know much closer to the to, to the um, to the northern edge of, of School Lane um, and, and closing up. This to me is is you know the final building that actually rounds off that particular settlement to the west. And to, the, to the, and to the north of the road, compared with the south of the road. If you look at the whole north and south of that point, and then 
<coughs> ask yourself, is that relating more to the town or rather more, more, more to the built area or to the countryside? And to me, it's, it's, it relates better to the, uh, it will relate properly to the, uh, to the whole settlement there. Yeah. Um, right. So, did, did I see Councillor Biggs? Yes. Thank you, uh, Chairman. I, I wanted to raise a point of order first of all. Uh, Councillor Robbins has already spoken on this once, and um, to allow him to come back and uh, rebut um, previous comment, I think is um, is out of order. Uh, could I? But I agree with um, Councillors Nicholas and Duffin that. Um, this looks like ribbon development, and I agree with our officers, so I will not be supporting the uh, uh, the approval of this application. Right, is there, um, David, are, are there any other speakers? Councillor Hurd. Yeah, Councillor Hurd. <coughs> yeah, I got, I think I might support this because I remember being at Bodmin for a planning training, and there was a development very similar to this, which was refused. It had been used for garden agriculture and it was refused. And when it went to appeal, uh, the appeals officer approved it. So I'm quite concerned. I think it might get turned over at appeal. So I'll probably support it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have you got any other speakers, David? <clears throat> Councillor Robson's got his hand up again, I think. No, this time, and, and I wouldn't be allowed to speak anyway, I'll, I'll end up upsetting another member. Put your hand down then. <laughs> is it, down it is. Yeah, that's, it's down now. That's, so, uh, have you got any other speakers, David? No, Chairman. No. Uh, Chairman. Um, Mr. Broomhead, would you like yeah. to come in? Because yeah. obviously if this was approved, there's some conditions you would probably want. Um. Yeah, I just, uh, if, if Adam just goes to the photographs, I think, uh, it's just the aerial photograph would be okay. I think you can see there is is completely different in character to the um, the residential use to the uh, east, and it is our view it's clearly outside the settlement. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't been it isn't clear that any part of it is is uh, brownfield in our our view. There isn't a certificate of lawfulness, mm -hmm. and I think Adam, it was only the top section that um, if you go to the existing block plan. It was the top section what was debated to be possibly brownfield is that correct adam adam that's that's correct mark yes yeah, so i was in presentation mode i couldn't uh, unmute my oh. mic <laughs> yes yeah, it's, it's the top section that, that small section up the top but that's still not clear in our view despite the um comments of the uh, the applicant so it's clearly outside the settlement and therefore, obviously, it doesn't meet the uh, development plan policies for new housing development. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, yeah. The, the proposal the I've got, Mark, yeah. is for approval. So are there any conditions yeah. you want to We'd yeah. have the statutory plans, um, drainage condition, and uh, the boundary hedge retention. Yeah, right. Thank you. So um, with that, we'll go to the vote. Um, so it will be contrary to the officer's recommendation, so uh, which would be for approval with the conditions that uh, Mr. Broomhead has just read out. So um, over, you, <coughs> sorry, over to you, Angela, and we'll do it by roll call. Thank you. Councillor Bastin. Against. Councillor Biggs. Against. Councillor Code. For. Councillor Doffin. Against. Councillor Eakin Smith. Against. Councillor Harding. Against. Councillor Hurd. For. Councillor Kaczmarek. Against. Councillor Martin. Against. Councillor Nicholas. Against. Councillor Pascoe. Against. Councillor Robinson. For. Councillor John Thomas. Against. And Councillor Mike Thomas. Four. I'll just count that up a moment, Chairman. Um, the motion for approval has um, not been successful. Um, we've had 10 votes against and three in favour. Yeah, so, so we'll need another recommendation. Four in favour, yes. Yeah. 
So if if somebody would like to um, move the refusal no, out as per application, uh, sorry, agenda. Councillor Duffin, Yeah. Yeah, happy to move as per the agenda. Yeah, and a seconder. Happy Council to second. There's Councillor Nicholas seconding. Right, so we'll now go for, um, take the vote for refusal as per agenda. So uh, be another roll call over to Angela, please. Councillor Bastin. Four. Councillor Biggs. Four. Councillor Code. Against. Councillor Duffin. Four. Councillor Eakin Smith. Four. Councillor Harding. Four. Councillor Hurd. Against. Councillor Katchmarek. Four. Councillor Martin. Four. Councillor Nicholas. Four. Councillor Pasco. Four. Councillor Robinson. Against. Councillor John Thomas. Four. Councillor Mike Thomas. Against. I'll just uh, count that for a moment. The application has been refused by 10 votes in favour and four against. Right, thank you. Um, I think it's five to 12, so I think we will have a quick comfort break. Um, if we could make it between five and 10 minutes, um, that'd be fine. Uh, Angela, if you could re um, remind me or let me know when everybody's back again. And I just remind members that it's been live streamed, so if perhaps it'd be a good idea to switch your microphones off. Uh, Chairman, could we give a time for everybody to come back? Uh, right, well, it's... Um, five past twelve? Yeah, if we say five past twelve, that'd be fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Barnes, it's Angela Saunders from Democratic Services. We're just about to start item 5.4 at five past 12. So we're not on to yours yet. So you're welcome to stay on the meeting, but could I ask that you turn your camera off, please, until it gets to your point to speak for your item. Thank you. What time roughly will that be, please? I honestly couldn't begin to guess what time your item will start. But um, Emma Code, my colleague from Democratic Services, was going to give you a call when they start the item. Right. Councillor Barnes, it's Emma Code. Um, I'm the meeting producer today. If you're right. happy, I can either give you a call or send you a text message when we get to your item. Would that be helpful? Well, I'm uh, I'm in the knowledge bar and I've just gone in to do this vaccine trial and uh, I've now finished that. I need to know if I got time to go somewhere else to then log in again. Yeah, it, it's very very difficult to give you uh, any any kind of time scale. I'm afraid we've still got four items before yours. So that's all right. That'll give me time. I know from that yeah. I've got time to go yeah. uh, to I where I normally work in the hospital. OK, would you prefer me to send you a text message? Well, or if, you? if you send me a text message like two applications before, because I'll have to yeah. log back in. Yeah, no problem. I'll do that for you. OK, just okay. to let you know that my number will end in nine double six. So you'll know it's from me. That's all right. OK, thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.
Chairman, it's Angela from Democratic Services. Do you want me to do a roll call to see if everybody's back? Uh, probably that would be a good idea, yes. Thank you. Councillor Bastin. Yes, Angela, I'm here. Councillor Biggs. Present. Councillor Code. Councillor Code. You're on mute. I'll come back to him. Councillor Duffin. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Councillor Hurd. Present. Councillor Katchmarek. I'm here. Thank you. Councillor Martin. Present. Councillor Nicholas. Here. Councillor Pascoe. Present. Councillor Robinson. Present. Councillor John Thomas. Present. Councillor Mike Thomas. Present. Uh, Councillor Code, are you there? Councillor Code, are you back? Chairman, it appears that everybody is back apart from Councillor Code at the moment. Yeah, so be in order to start the meeting, would it? <clears throat> um, Yes, it's up to you, although Councillor Code should um, hear all of the debate in order to be able to vote. Do you want me to give him a quick call? Well, perhaps if you do that, yes. I'll just check he's not back. Councillor Code, are you back yet? Yes, I am. Sorry, I've been suffering with this unresponsive mouse cursor. Okay, Chairman, everybody's now back. Right. Um, right. Well, welcome back, everybody. We're going to item agenda 44. That's PA 194 slash 11124. Mr. and Mrs. S. Firth, land and buildings east of the old cart house to borrow the Paranus now. And that's on the reports on page uh, pages 80 to 96. Uh, Adam, you, you're taking us through that one again. You're still there, are you? Yeah, hi there, Char. Just, uh, yeah, share just a minute, text me a minute. moment. Um, see if you can share that with us, please. <clears throat> yeah, that's fine. So when you're ready, Adam, over to you. OK, you see the presentation? Yeah, yes, that's fine. Yeah, great. OK, this is the, an application for full planning permission for the erection of one dwelling together with associated works and the temporary stationing of a, of a caravan during construction. So the key issues which we will return to at the end are whether the proposed dwelling would integrate successfully into the surrounding built form, as well as conserve and enhance the scenic beauty of the AONB, and whether the proposed dwelling would preserve the residential amenities of the immediately adjacent neighbours, notably the old potato barn to the north and seascapes to the southeast. So the application site you can see here is situated in the small hamlet of Trebava near Peranuthno. Uh, all of the site falls within the Cornwall area of outstanding natural beauty, as shown by the horizontal bars going across the map. Moving in a little bit closer, you can see the site in relation to the neighbouring buildings and dwellings. There's also a network of public rights of way which pass by the site, notably to the south, as shown by the blue dotted lines. And this is the site in aerial photographic form, just showing it in relation to the, to the, the former farming hamlet of Trebava. So on the left hand side of this side, you see the existing site plan. Um, the photographs may show this a bit better in terms of the existing layout, but at the moment you've got a, a former agricultural building in, in the southwestern corner of the site. On the right hand side, you can see the proposed dwelling, which is in the middle. Apologies for not showing that clearly. Um, you can see it's an L shaped plan form with a uh, garden extending to the rear and a new axis onto the lane. To the north is the old potato barn, if you can see the cursor, and to the southeast is seascapes. So these are proposed elevations. So as you can see, the, the dwelling is of relatively simple proportions. Uh, it's got granite facing at ground floor level and timber boarding at first floor level. The only exception to this is on the rear elevation where it's all in timber boarding. Uh, casement windows, and as you'll see on the southwest elevation, there's a couple of inset terraces. 
uh, which it, it, it intended to make the most of the, of the views of this aspect. At the bottom of the, of the slide is the floor plan. So at the ground floor level, you've got some, well, most of the, well, some of the living accommodation and some bedroom accommodation. And the same applies at the first floor level, some living accommodation and some bedroom accommodation as well. At uh, the top of this uh, slide, you can see a street elevation plan in uh, showing the proposed dwelling on the left in relation to seascapes on the right. And at the bottom, you can see some 3D images. These aren't produced to scale. These are just to give you an indication uh, of what the dwelling would look like. Onto the site photographs. Um, the one central at the top is looking towards the site from the farmyard. Uh, the existing building with the blue doors here, that's the agricultural building on the site. That's to be demolished. On the right hand side, you can see seascapes with the silver car parts parked in front. Just to the left hand side of the agricultural building, you can see the old potato barn and the two cars parked in front of it, which are associated with that property. At the bottom of the, of the a, um, slide is again, much like the previous presentation, just views to the looking to the left and to the right from that central viewpoint. So these are views from within the site. Top left is looking down the site with the existing building on the right. Top right is looking back towards the farmyard again. Again, you can see the agricultural building there and um, the existing dwellings on, on each side. The bottom left is the rear of the site ne next to the lane. You can see the static caravan that they're seeking retrospective permission for. And the bottom right shows uh, the edge of the caravan looking towards the old potato barn on the other side of the block wall. These photographs in intend to show the relationship with the neighbouring dwellings. So the top two are looking at the neighbouring seascapes from within the site. And the bottom two show the relationship with the old potato barn. So the bottom left uh, shows it looking just behind the existing agricultural building towards the dwelling. And the bottom right shows the pic a view from the farmyard looking towards this dwelling here. So you can see the, re the relationship of the dwelling and the neighbouring dwelling with the existing agricultural building on the site. So on balance, um, the concerns raised about the design, scale and the siting of the dwelling are noted, in particular the impact upon the histor historic farming hamlet, the AONB, and the amenities of the neighbours. However, on balance, the dwelling is considered to demonstrate a clear understanding and response to its unique and challenging setting in between historic and contemporary dwellings and would not, in our view, give rise to unacceptable neighbour amenity impacts. The recommendation is for conditional approval. I'll draw members' attention to the addendum, which gives details of further representations from the applicant, a response from the local planning authority to a letter from Acuity Law, which I believe members have already been sent under separate cover, and it's also indicating a letter from two of the neighbours, Messrs Tucker and Hall, which I believe has also been sent to members, just basically drawing your attention to it. And since then, there's been one further representation from the applicant. Uh, in his view, the claim by the neighbour that his courtyard level is 1.5 metres below the finished floor level of the dwelling is, in his view, considered to be inaccurate and misleading. Um, yes, basically challenging some of the, the re re representations made about that point. That's the end of the presentation. Thank you very much. <clears throat> right. Th uh, thank you, Adam. We, we have got speakers. The first is Mr. Justin Halls. Uh, Mr. Halls, can you hear me? Hello, Mr. Halls. Chairman, it's Emma Code Meeting Producer. Uh, Mr. Halls, you're on mute. If you could press star six on your telephone to unmute. Mr. Halls, can you hear me now? Mr. Halls. Mr. Halls, it's Emma Code, meeting producer. Could you press star six on your telephone to unmute? Hello, this is Mr. Halls. Can you hear me? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, good, good afternoon, Mr. Halls. Um, Welcome to uh, today's committee. Um, it will be the usual format that you'll have three minutes to speak. We'll prompt you when it's 30 seconds to go. Um, as, as soon as you're ready, please start speaking and your time will start from then. Hello, um, I'll be referring to images circulated to you in the later letter dated the 10th of November. I'd be grateful if you could have a copy to hand whilst I speak. Um, I live with my family in the old potato barn, the neighbouring property most affected by the proposed development, and I'm speaking on behalf of the 20 members of the public who objected to this application. 
I, along with many others of the community, supported the grant for outline planning. We support the premise of development of this plot and we welcome another home in the hamlet. The basis for the substantial objection lies in achieving a building which respects the historic character of this AOMB area and is not overbearing or overshadowing on its neighbours. I'd like to draw attention to the legal letter and assessment sent to you by Acuity Law. I don't have the time to outline all of the serious irregularities in this planning application from the report, both in the procedures used by the LPA, as well as the factual inaccuracies and inconsistencies in the application and in the officer's report to this committee. I quote the conclusion, it's clear that the procedure adopted by the LPA is confusing, far from transparent, and the consultees have in fact been misled. That the process used by the planning authority is so defective that it does not, indeed cannot, provide a valid basis for this application to be determined at this stage. Next, overbearing impact on the neighbours and the hamlet. Adjacent to the plot is a building called Seascape. You can see this building in images five to seven. Seascape is unique in the hamlet, big, tall and modern, whereas the rest of the buildings in the farmyard are traditional, small and granite. Seascape should not set a precedent and the LPA initially acknowledged this, but it's subsequently treated by the LPA and the applicant as a precedent. There are many examples of this. There has been virtually no assessment of the impact of a second building similar to Seascape would have in the context of the whole hamlet. Next, overbearing on the old potato barn, please refer to images 11 to 13. Half of the old potato barn miss building is missing from the LPA report, the half that is most impacted by the proposed development. In the applicant's plans, the old potato barn is not labelled as such and key features that are required to assess the overbearingness are completely omitted. A final point. The application proposes to make a new second entrance onto the road at the rear of the property. The road with no pavement is used as a footpath by members of the public. School children walk here daily to get to the bus stop and there is a public post box a few feet away. It would be unsafe to create a vehicular access point here and it's totally unnecessary. There's an ample access from the front. There's been no safety assessment to justify this contravention um, of access. So in conclusion, there are serious irregularities in the procedures adopted by the planning authority, which has led to a lack of transparency and to the consultees being misled. Two, there are factual inaccuracies and inconsistencies in both the planning application and the officer's report. Three, there's an unacceptable level of overbearing, overshadowing, overlooking impact on the neighbours that specialist legal assessment has demonstrated has not been accurately or adequately assessed. Four, there's a lack of assessment of impact on this important heritage area in the parish and the AOMB. Five, there is a lack That's of adequate uh, uh, time safety to impacts. Uh, I ask please for members to reject this application in its current okay. form. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. if you could just uh, wait just a moment, just see if any of the members got a question for you. Uh, are there any questions, David? No, Chairman. No. Right, thank you very much, Mr. Walls, for attending today's meeting. Thank you. Right, the next speaker we got is uh, Councillor Scobie from Paranusno Parish Council. Um, can you hear me, Councillor Scobie? Uh, Chairman, it's Emma Code Meeting Producer. Uh, Mr. Scobie should be dialing in at any moment. Right, thank you. Uh, Councillor Scobie, I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, it's Angela. You'll see um, him go into the lobby when he dials in. Right, thank you. Perhaps would it be in order if we went on to Mr Firth, if he's available, Angela, or have we got to wait for... Uh, Chairman, it's Emma Code again. Mr Firth is not online yet either. No, right, OK. Got Council Barnes, he's a bit early.
Chairman, it's Emma Code, meeting producer. I've just spoken to the parish council's representative, Mr Scobie. He's just about to dial into the meeting. All right, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Is that Councillor Code? Chairman, um, that is uh, Mr Firth who's just joined us. We're still waiting for uh, the Parish Council representative. I think he's just joining us now, the Parish Council representative. Uh, is that Councillor Scobie? Good afternoon. Uh, Councillor Scobie, can you hear me? Hello? Oh, good afternoon. Is that Councillor Scobie? It is, yes. yeah. Right. Uh, good, good, good afternoon and welcome to uh, this afternoon's meeting. Um, you. you'll, you'll have three minutes to speak and we'll prompt you when it's 30 seconds to go and your time will start as soon as you start speaking. So once you're ready, if you just carry on, please. Right, thank you. In August 2020, it was proposed and seconded and carried unanimously that the Parent Luthano Parish Council strongly objects to these proposals on the following grounds. One, this application does not follow the advice from and policy of the Como area for outstanding natural beauty. The proposed buildings are wrongly not restricted to the area approved for the building in the outline planning permission given for the plot. The footprint, ridge heights and mass of this proposed house uh, overbearing for and reduces the amenity of the neighbouring houses, especially the old potato barn and seascapes. And the ridge height of this proposed prominent house needs to be significantly reduced so that the rooftop levels of this group of houses run downhill with the fall of the land from the southeast to the northwest. The maximum level of the ridge of the proposed new house should be significantly lower than the maximum level of the ridge of seascapes. The details of the materials used for the exterior of the roof and walls should be clearly specified and be appropriate and sympathetic to the original adjoining traditional local domestic and agricultural buildings and the Como AONB policy. All glass used for balustrades or large windows should be non-reflective and details of the design and materials to be used should first be approved by Como Council. The adjoining and nearby footpaths must not be interfered with during the construction period and the parking area used by walkers should not be used for construction related traffic and activities. We do not approve of the large temporary caravan on this restricted site, especially without time and use restrictions. 30 seconds left. In addition to this, note the Parish Council were not made aware by Colmore Council 
that the planning department had changed the type of this planning application from reserved matters to a full application. Also, that the parish council did offer to meet the applicants to discuss these matters, but this was never taken up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Councillor Scobie. Uh, if you just wait a moment, just in case we've got some questions for you. Um, yep. Have you got any members of questions, David? No, Chairman. No. Right. Uh, thank you very much for your attendance, Councillor Scobie. Good afternoon to you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Right. Um, right. Uh, next speaker is Mr. Stuart Firth. Um, are you there, Mr. Firth? Chairman, it's Emma Code Meeting Producer. Uh, if Mr. Firth can hear me, could you press star six to unmute your telephone? Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Firth, and welcome to uh, this afternoon's okay. meeting. Um, you'll have three minutes, and there will be a prompt at 30 seconds, and your time will start from when you start speaking. So uh, once you're ready, please carry on making your statement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Before submitting our application, we contacted the parish and county councils for advice, and were told that we should review the relevant local policies, consider materials, and the locale. In response to this, and through consultation with our agent and the planning authority, we feel our design provides a family home that is fit for purpose, supporting our need to live and work essential now in the post-COVID world. It was always our intention to live on site to effectively manage the build, ensuring our children could attend the local primary school and feel part of their new community. The need to move on site was brought forward by the first lockdown, when our temporary accommodation was closed. With the help of our agent, we were able to achieve this and avoid homelessness. However, in addition to the stresses of lockdown, the protracted timescale of our application has taken a heavy toll on our family. Since our original application in December 2019, we have worked diligently with the planning authority to hone our design to take into account the best aspects of sustainable good practice. And this included reviewing existing local design policies as well as the draft versions of the Parish Neighbourhood Development Plan and the Cornwall Design Guide. We have amended our design several times in response to material issues raised, including moving the building forward and reducing the section of the rear elevation to a single storey to further respect the amenity of neighbouring buildings. We took our inspiration from Trebava Farm, the prominent residential farmhouse on the Trebava skyline that was the original building in the enclave to which many of the now converted barns once belonged. We have been disappointed that the comparisons that have been made by our objectors omit this building completely. In addition, many of the comparisons made are to buildings that are currently used solely as holiday homes, and this is not, in our opinion, representative of residential use. The adjacent new build seascape is a modern design and ours, we feel, needs to be a bridge between this and the barn conversions, whilst accepting that modern building design cannot and should not replicate or pastiche those buildings. Our design references the traditional whilst meeting current building standards, thus forming that bridge. The position of the Parish Council in supporting Seascape's modern design, despite public objection and concerns raised by the AONB, whilst opposing our application, seems to us inconsistent and hard to understand. The process has been both transparent and considerate with the Parish Council an extension to time of time to respond. This consideration is proven in the time taken for the planning department to reach their decision. Ours is not a speculative application. The site was one of two sites granted outline planning together for two two-storey family homes. The outline planning for our plot was renewed without objections prior to, the, to our purchase, and we have worked with the council for an extended period rather than push for non-determination. That's three minutes. Well, that, that's time, Mr. Firth. I'm afraid I've got to stop you there. Uh, if you could just wait, uh, just to see if any um, members have got any questions for you. Are, are there any, David? No, Chairman. No. Okay. Well, uh, thank you very much for your attendance, Councillor Firth, and uh, good afternoon to you. Thank you. Thank um, you. With that, we go on to the divisional um, member, which that's uh, Councillor Sue Nicholas. Uh, are you there, Sue? 
Yes, I am chairman. Thank you. Uh, good to you. Um, the usual thing, five minutes and um, at five minutes, we'll be asking you to wind up. Thank you. No, that's fine. Thank you. Well, the first thing I have to say is that I find it unbelievable um, the antagonism that's gone on um, over this application. Um, and I, I think, you know, I think it's extremely regrettable that we've had to bring it to committee. Um, the outline planning permission, there is no objection from the um, parish council or myself on the outline planning permissions. The issue has been about the size and the bulk and the massing of the proposal that you have before you today. There have been elevations referred to alongside the building with seascapes, but in fact, the potato barn is a lot lower in elevation. And if you go back, and it's taken me a while to work this out, Adam, can you take it back to the photograph of um, the site? Thank you. It took me a while to look at how this didn't seem to, to fit in. If you notice, all those buildings or the majority of those buildings are actually gable ended or look like gable ends, whereas the proposed building is a full on view of it, if you like. So if that makes sense, yeah, that's the and I think that's the difference. It has that impact because it appears to be overbearing and rather large. I'm very disappointed that we didn't get the street elevations uh, between seascapes, this proposal and the potato barn, because I think that would have shown uh, a significant difference in the, in the drops. I'm ignoring all the bits about caravans and, you know, back wall entrances and all the rest of it, though I do think that, um, you know, a planning application for the caravan could have come in as part of that policy. And overall, I think we need to look at the objections of the AONB, which are very realistic, and it is a quiet hamlet that is very visible from all over the place. Um, and I think that where we have on page because uh, I'm not going to reiterate everything. If you look on page 87 at the top, the issues that are arising and the conflict of proposal with policies 2, 12, 13, 23 and 24 of the CLP, policies MD9, MD11 and SCW 8.04 of the Cornwall AON Management Plan, of which this whole area is part of. Um, and I just think that the whole thing so it needs to go back to the outline and that we come up with a discussion with the applicants, their agents, the parish council and myself. And, you know, we need to talk realistically about how it's going to fit in with the area. And I do think that this should be refused and we should go back to the outline. And with any luck, the applicants and their agents and everyone else will have a rational discussion on it. But I do think that this one should be refused on the size and the, and the height. The whole thing is, is overbearing in that particular small hamlet. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, Sue. Um, are, are there any questions for Councillor Nicholas? No, no, Chairman, no. no. Right, so with that, we go in for questions of officers. Um, are there any questions of the officers? Any, David? No, uh, Councillor Duffing. Yeah, Councillor Duffing. Um, yeah, so I'd just like to ask, you know, how much um, negotiation has gone on with regard to the design of the building? Um, is uh, is there sort of merit in deferring this? Do you have a, another conversation? Um, I totally understand that the modern building next to it then makes it you know, it's acceptable to have a more modern building, but I just think possibly the height of it and would be something that would be good. So my question to the officer is, is there um, some merit in going back and having another look at this? Mr. Broomhead. Yeah, I, I'll answer first, but I'll get Adam to uh, go into that more detail. But you'll know we've been uh, carrying out extensive uh, negotiations because I think the application has been in 11 months if that's correct Adam if you want to comment further on what negotiations have been carried out Adam <coughs> you're muted if you 
Sorry, Mark. Yeah, I was pressing the wrong thing. Um, yeah, just to answer Council Duffin's first point. Um, yeah, I, I was brought into this application relatively late in the determination period. Um, prior to my involvement, there have been two previous iterations of this. So basically the one before members now is it's the third iteration of this proposed development that has followed on from negotiations and trying to take into account views of the consultees and neighbours alike. So yeah, it, it has been looked at and there's been several re-consultations, but obviously members want to decide whether what's in front of them now is acceptable or whether they want further negotiation to take place. Right, thank you. Um, are, are there any other questions, David? Councillor Richard um, Robinson. Robinson. Yeah, uh, Councillor Robinson, you've got a question. Yeah, it's it's for Adam. Um, um, Councillor Nicholas asked for a, um, a picture, picture, picture to be thrown up. Could you put that picture back up again? The one with the two buildings side by side. Yeah, that's it. Um, I mean, a lot is being made about the um, about the height of the building to the left, the one that we're, we're talking about, and um, and looking at it, you know, I can't see. For a start, it, it is it is um, lower, uh, smaller than um, uh, the existing building seascapes, um, and I know as you can see between the two, uh, one step down, and and. From what I remember of having read this and re read some of the uh, supporting documentation that came in, the, the, the recommendation was that there should be a cascade running from um, from east to west, um, uh, decreasing in height, and, and surely that's that's what we've got. And and if you look at the, the actual width of the building, and we're talking about overall massing, um, it looks very similar uh, to in width to the uh, to the seascapes building. Um, am I right, or or or, or is there something I'm, I'm missing here? Do you want to answer that, Adam? Um, no, you're, you're, well, your observations are correct, Councillor Robinson. In terms of the width of the dwelling, um, it's relatively similar facing to the southwest compared to seascapes. I think the point Councillor Nicholas was making before is that um, given that it doesn't have a gable presenting to the farmyard, it, I think in, in her view, in, in the view of some of the neighbours and contributors, it gives rise to greater massing. But no, fundamentally, the width of the dwellings, as you can see from the um, plan, is very similar and it does, you know, um, so it is set slightly lower down from sea seascapes, thereby not, therefore, in our view, um, respecting the fall of the land in that direction. Yeah, yeah you okay with that, Mr. Robinson? Yeah, right. Uh, David, are there any other questions? Uh, Councillor Mike Thomas. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, this is a, a question to legal to 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 uh, to Ben. Is he able to? Is it appropriate for him to be able to comment on the letter from Actuity Law? Obviously, any decision made by by any planning committee can uh, go to legal challenge. But there's an implication that uh, this application uh, does have uh, vulnerabilities. Is he able to comment on that, please? Just just before Ben comes in, Chairman, if if. Uh Councillor Thomas looks at the addendum. There's a quite a comprehensive response, which yes. Ben will obviously, uh, which has been discussed with Ben beforehand. Right. Okay. If that's sufficient, so Ben can clarify that for yeah. you. I was just looking for a a, a very short statement. Um, yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks, Councillor Thomas. Yeah, that's helpful, um, Mark. That's all I was going to say, Councillor Thomas. It's been covered off in the addendum, and okay. I'm satisfied with that. I have seen the addendum, and obviously I've seen the the letter. And have you anything to add? Based no, on what, I think uh, it's been covered off very well by Mr. Colline. Lovely. So. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you. Just wanted Thank to you. check. Were, were there any other questions, David? Councillor Nicholas, Chair. Yeah. Councillor Nicholas. Thank you, Chair. Um, just referring to the elevations, uh, the biggest issue on the elevation is the, between the proposed building and the old potato barn because of the drop in heights. Could, could you respond to that, Mark? Yeah, if, if um, obviously on the block plan, you can see the, the relationship uh, with the potato barn, which is the, to the north north side and obviously seascapes is to the to the right hand side as members look 
look at it. If um, if you uh, put the photographs up, Adam, we may get a better context of the there. Uh, go back if you go back one. And again, there you can see the uh, the um, existing agricultural building with the blue uh, the blue doors, and obviously the the other buildings behind it. So you can picture the height of this new proposal in relation to those, which was shown on um, the other elevation. Thank you. Right. So, so um, were, were there any further questions, David? No, Jim. No, right. So with that, over to the committee members. If um, anybody want to make any comments or hopefully propose something somewhere along the line. So over to the committee. Councillor Biggs, Chairman. Yeah, Councillor Biggs. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I think it's. I mean, it's very disappointing that we've got an application in front of us where the um, the, the the principle of development is agreed. And what we're talking about here is, uh, and I, I think the we have to draw the relationship between the old potato barn and this proposed dwelling, rather than the seascape to the right of it. I think that's the, for me, that's the relationship that uh, is critical here. Um, it's in an AONB and we do have to be particularly sensitive around this. Um, again, I think it's regrettable it's taken this long to get this far and I have some sympathy with the applicant because of that. Um, but in, in the, I was just looking through the, the agenda items which we have, Chairman, and um, we referenced policy 12 of the local plan um, over 20 times in in our agenda today and that the question of mass and scale uh, and, and indeed just neighbourliness I think for me um, <clears throat> makes this proposal unacceptable as I see it uh, and therefore I couldn't I couldn't in all honesty support the application as it stands and I would be seeking, I, I, I don't know where we go with this, but I, I certainly think that we, we've got to go back and say that we, it's got to be made in comparison to the, to the smaller dwelling, not in relation to the larger dwelling. Uh, and therefore, I would be seeking to refute this as it stands at the moment. Thank you. Yeah, uh, are, are you moving that, uh, Councillor Biggs? Uh, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll move that, if that's, uh, Chairman. Yeah, is, is there a seconder for that? Councillor Bastin, Chairman. Yeah, Councillor Sebastian. Oops. Yes, Chairman, I, I agree entirely with Councillor Biggs. I, I think it's very much a case, as he, as he rightly says, to look at the smaller building, not the bigger building. So the, the whole lot sort of cascades together properly. So I'm quite happy to support that. Yeah, so so we would want grounds for refusal. But I don't know whether you want to wait and I'll see if I've got any other speakers. Is, is there anybody to a contrary view that wanted to speak? No, Chairman. No, so we come back to um, sort of uh, Mr. Broomhead, could, yeah. could you, would mm -hmm. you want to comment on, on what you've heard from Councillor Biggs? OK, well, listening and uh, correct me, Councillor Biggs, if I've not picked up all the points. Uh, by reason of its large scale, which would be at odds with the more modest and rural character of the development in the historic farming hamlet, coupled with its position a short distance to the south of the old potato barn, which would give rise to unacceptable overbearing and overshadowing impacts on upon the said property. The proposal is considered to represent poor quality design, which fails to demonstrate a clear understanding response to its built and natural environment setting, in turn failing to conserve the landscape and scenic beauty of the Cornwall AMB, whilst the proposal would be situated adjacent to a similar large and contemporary building in seascapes, the southeast. This does not provide justification for further incremental harm to the setting of the settlement and the OMB. The proposal is therefore considered to conflict with the aims and intentions of policies 1, 2, 12, 23 and 24 of the Common Local Plan. Paragraphs 8, 127, 170, 172, 184 and 197 on the MPPF and policy MD9 of the Common AMB Management Plan. Does that pick up your 
points, Councillor Biggs. Uh, very adequately. Thank you very much, Mr. Broomhead. Yeah, and you're happy with that, Councillor Bastin? Yes, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, um, David, is anybody else indicated to um, speak? No, Chairman. No. So with that, I, I'll put it to the vote. It will be for refusal, which is contrary to the um, recommendation. And it's on the grounds that Mr. Broomhead has read out. So uh, over to you, Angela. We'll do it by roll call. Thank you. Councillor Bastin. Four. Councillor Biggs. Four. Councillor Code. Against. Councillor Duffin. Against. Councillor Eakin Smith. Four. Councillor Harding. Four. Councillor Hurd. Four. Councillor Katchmarek. Four. Councillor Martin. Four. Councillor Pascoe. Four. Councillor Robinson. Against. Councillor John Thomas. Four. Councillor Mike Thomas. Four. I'll just count that up, Chairman. I can confirm that the application has been refused by 10 votes in favour and three against. Right, thank you. So with that, we go on to uh, agenda item 4.5. That's Mr. and Mrs. Woodcock, three the Elms Paranusno. And I just looking. Um, right, is Kate, Kate, Katie, you're digging with that one, are you? Sorry, I was. I Kate. am indeed. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Bear with right, me, we, we can hear you loud and clear. So um, if you're sharing a screen with, it, with us, if you'd like to just show that for us, just make sure that's OK. No problem. Bear with me. Can you see that OK? Yeah, that's fine. So over to you when you're ready, if you take us through it. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, this is a Section 73 application relating to a permission granted in 1974 for the reconstruction of a farmhouse to form a terrace of three dwellings. Condition three attached to that permission restricted the use of the dwellings to full time residential occupation with no holiday use permitted. This application seeks to remove that condition. No physical alterations are proposed. The key issues to consider are the principle of unrestricted occupancy, the impact on residential amenity and the parking provisions available. The site is located within the village of Peronusno on the coast, south of the A394 between Helston and Penzance. Here's a closer view of the application site. Is that working OK? Bear with me. Uh, of the application site in the context of the village and just within the conservation area. Here is an aerial view of the village with the site on the northern edge, just off the main road leading into Peronusno. Here are the location and block plans showing the site in relation to one and two the elms within the same terrace and showing the associated curtilage, attached garage, parking and amenity space to the front of the dwelling. This is a photograph taken from the road looking into the site with the terrace of one, two and three the elms on the left and number three at the far end. Here you can see the photographs of the application building with the attached garage, further parking space to the front of the garage and patio area to the front of the house. And the balance of considerations are the proposed holiday let is considered to be appropriate to its location close by to a number of facilities that the village of Peronisno offers. Given that number three, the Elms, is within the settlement and given that policy has changed since the 1974 permission was given, condition three is no longer considered necessary, relevant or reasonable and does not meet the test set out in paragraph 55 of the MPPF. The reason for the condition is not precise and this adds further weight to supporting its removal. Therefore, the recommendation is approval. Thank you, Chair. Right, thank you, Katie. Um, we have got speakers on this. Um, first one is Mr. Peter Linton. I don't know if, if you can hear me, Mr. Linton. Yeah. 
Emma, is um, Mr Linton in the lobby or? Uh, yes, Chairman, he's in the meeting. Uh, his phone is muted. So if you could press star six, Mr Linton, on your telephone to unmute. Yeah, good afternoon. Is that Mr Linton? Mr Linton, can you hear me? Chairman, it's Emma Code meeting producer again. It looks like Mr Linton has now left the meeting. Um, if he can hear, if you could redial in, that would be helpful. Thank you. Um, Chairman, I didn't know if you wanted to move on to the other speakers while we're yeah. waiting for Mr Linton. Yeah, to okay. Um, is Mr Sharp in the lobby? Uh, yes, he uh, is. He'll have to press star six to unmute. Yeah, is that Councillor Sharp? Good morning. Can you hear me, Mr Chair? Yeah, is that Councillor Sharp? It is indeed, yes. Yes, right. Uh, good, good afternoon. Um, welcome to the meeting. Um, it'll be usual format. You'll have three minutes to speak and we'll prompt you when it's 30 seconds to go. So, uh, as soon as you start talking, look at the uh, time will start then. So once you're ready, please carry on. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, my name is David Sharp. I am on the Penrith North Parish Council and I also live in the village of Penrith North. Back in 1974, the councillors of the time were very forward thinking on sustainability when they imposed this condition on the conversion of the farmhouse to three houses. And I say houses because that is what they are. They're not flat. However, despite their foresight, I don't think even they were able to realise just how serious the situation would become, not just in Poenothno, but also in similar villages throughout Cornwall. Local people consulted over our neighbourhood neighbourhood plan voiced very strong concerns about the level of second homes and holiday lets in the village. Cornwall Council data from 2011 identified that between 28 and 38 percent of the homes in Poenothno were homes of this type and the situation has got much worse since then. Virtually every home that comes up for sale ends up becoming a holiday home. The Parish Council have included a principal residency clause in our neighbourhood plan but this will have little or no impact in Poenothno where there is no foreseeable plans at all for new builds. The very real threat is existing homes becoming holiday lets. It was identified back in the 70s and it is an even bigger problem today. I believe the balance between permanent residence homes and second holiday homes has shifted way too much in favour of the latter. I understand that it is very difficult to control or influence, but here we have the opportunity to do the right thing by the local community. You, Cornwall Council, have an agreed policy note to press for planning permission to be required to change to holiday home or second home use. If this policy statement is to mean anything, you have the opportunity today to support the policy and keep an existing home as part of the permanent housing stock, helping in a small but meaningful way to enhance the sustainability of our village, rather than taking a backward step and repudiating your own council's policy position. Feelings locally are running very high on this issue. Young people have no opportunity to live where they were raised and people downsizing have no choice but to move away. That cannot be right. I genuinely sympathise with the current owners, owners sorry, who may well be seen as trying to do the right 30 thing. 30 seconds left. But I strongly believe that the right thing would be to leave this property where it belongs and that is as a permanent residence for a young family or perhaps an elderly local. In recent times, that is exactly what all three of these properties were. I believe the removal of this condition would be the wrong decision. And I make that statement with the full backing of my fellow parish councillors, who were all opposed to the removal of this, to the application. Three minutes, Chairman. Right, I'm sorry, that's your time, Councillor Sharp. Uh, sorry, I've got to Thank interrupt you, you there. Um, if you could just wait a moment, just in case there are any questions. Uh, are, are there any questions, David? No, Chairman. No, right. Uh, 
Uh, thank you very much, Councillor Sharp, uh, for attending the meeting. Uh, good afternoon to you. Thank, thank you. you all for your time. Oh, thank you. Um, right, uh, Angela, have we got Mr Linton in the uh, lobby? Yeah. Chairman, it's Emma Code meeting producer. Mr Linton is in the lobby. He is muted at the moment, so if he could press star six on his telephone. I don't know if you can hear that, Mr Linton, but if you could press star six on your telephone. Yes, good afternoon, I'm, I'm on uh, the line now, sorry yeah, about it before. Right. Uh, good afternoon and welcome to the meeting Mr Linton. Um, you'll have three minutes to speak and then we'll uh, prompt you when it's 30 seconds to go and uh, your time will start when you start speaking. So what, once you're comfortable and ready to speak, please start and then we'll go on from there. All right, thank you very much. Um, obviously I've written something out, but just looking at the screen as we're all looking at it now, I'm not sure I understand uh, how a proposed hollow let is appropriate to this, this location. I live in the village, it's not a holiday village, it's a village for people to live in. There are holiday villages around, they're designated as such, but this isn't one of them. So what I wanted to say is, uh, I live in the village, I, I've made an online objection, but just to speak briefly and without repeating that, um, I've got two points to make regarding the planning application itself. First of all, the applicant claims the removal of the condition will contribute to the immediate economy. It's plainly not true. I, I spoke to the Vic Victoria Inn, which is just 50 yards from the property. Uh, the landlady tells me the pub can't handle any more business in the holiday season. They already operate at full capacity. What they need is business out of season, i.e. from permanent residents. Um, the second point on the application is the applicant says that under current planning guidelines, the permanent residence condition would not be applied to a new build. And hence the condition should, should be re retrospectively removed. I've got to therefore ask if the council agrees to removing it today, will they accept an application to retrospectively apply a no holiday let clause to this and every single other property in the village under the forthcoming neighbourhood plan. And then just taking a wider view, and as Councillor uh, Sharp has, has spoken, the Peronitha village is quickly turning into a ghost village. Almost every property that comes up for sale is snapped up by a buyer, and they know they can turn it into a holiday let without having to seek any sort of permission. At present, we, the residents and you, the council, have no means to prevent this. And we've already reached the unfortunate milestone of 30% holiday lets. But on this one occasion, we do have the means to prevent another property going to holiday lets. And that agreement made 45 years ago to give the developer permission to build with the proviso they were lived in should not be broken and the council shouldn't consider allowing this or any future owners to break that agreement. Thank you, that, that was all I had to say. Well, thank you. If you could just wait a moment, just in case we've got some questions for you. Um, David, are, has any member indicated he wants to ask a question? No, Chairman, no. No, right, thank you. Um, right, thank, thank you. you very much, Mr Linden. Good afternoon to you. Um, the next speaker we've got is Chloe Pitt. Um. Hello, Chair. Yeah. Well, uh, good, good afternoon, Chloe. Um, it's the usual format, which I'm sure you're aware of. It will be three minutes and we'll remind you when it's 30 seconds to go. So when you're ready, please start. Thank you. Good afternoon, members of the Planning Committee and officers. My name is Chloe Pitt and I'm a chartered planner from Lawrence Associates who are acting as planning agent for the application before you. The application has progressed because the applicants purchased the property in June of this year and would like to rent out the property as a holiday let when the applicants are not using the property. Notwithstanding this, it should be noted that the property has been let out since 2012 by the previous owner. The applicants have therefore done the right thing by trying to gain planning consent before renting out the property. Condition 3, subject to this application, stipulates that the property shall not be used for full-time residential, sorry, shall be used for full-time residential use and not holiday use. The reason for the condition sets out that it's in the interest of the amenities of the area and to secure the optimum use of the site. The Parish Council comments provided are acknowledged. 
However, unfortunately, I cannot agree with them. Their first comment relates to the property being lost as part of a housing stock to be run as a business. The applicants wish only to use the property for holiday let when they are not there for both functional and financial purposes. Moreover, the property has been used for holiday let for the past eight years by the previous owner. The second comment relates to inadequate parking, yet there is a parking space within the garage and in front of the property, which is appropriate for a two bedroom place. The final comment concerns a loss of a smaller, sorry, a smaller affordable home. However, irrespective of removing the condition, the property is not legally prescribed as affordable. And based on the sale amount this year of 315,000, it is fair to say that the condition does not depreciate the value of the property. The final point that I'd like to make is to point out that the Emerging Neighbourhood Development Plan for Paranoosno is recognised, which I raised with the Parish Council at our meeting in September. The policy was discussed and that the most relevant policy relates to the principal occupancy policy CW4 for new development or conversions. Evidently, the aspirations of the community are clear for future development. However, the policy cannot be applied to this property because it relates to an existing dwelling already included within the housing stock that was approved over 46 years ago. I respectfully ask members to choose to support this application and follow your officer recommendation of approval. The condition is no longer necessary, relevant or reasonable and does not meet the test of paragraph 55 of the National Planning Policy Framework. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Right, yeah. thank you, Chloe. Um, if, if you could just wait, we just see if we've got yeah. any questions. Um, David, uh, has any member indicated you want to speak? Yep, I have uh, Councillor Mike Thomas. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chloe. In terms of the parking arrangements, will, uh, if this is uh, passed, is it is it proposed that the parking will be allocated to each each holiday let or will it be managed slightly differently? The, the existing arrangements will, will still apply. The parking will be within the garage and one in front yes. of the garage. Yes, but will it be managed for anybody who turns up there or will they have to go to a specific parking space? Well, that, that is their allocated parking. It is, it's two for whoever stays in the property. And because it's a two bedroom property, we wouldn't anticipate any more than two cars. Realistically, I think it'd be one car. Um, staying at the property um i thought there were three apartments there no there are three dwellings i think the original description is misleading it's actually three dwellings and this is one one dwelling right so it's only one apartment we're looking at it's one dwelling yeah the description relates to flats but they are dwellings okay so a, a ground floor and a first floor thank you well, thank you. Uh, David, have you got any other speakers? Uh, Councillor Bastin. Yeah, over to you, John. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Chloe, I don't know whether you're in a position to give us any idea of yeah. the ratio between residents and letting. Um, yeah, I, I think I wouldn't be able to give you um, a true indication because at this moment in time, they haven't done it to date. When they took on the property, my clients chose not to rent the property so I, I don't know what the percentage will be it, it will be when they're not able to live in the property to to make sure really that there's optimum use of the site right thank you okay yeah um david have you got any other questions yes councillor uh kasmarek yeah councillor yes. kasmarek <laughs> thank you yes I, I think it's sort of answered the question i was going to ask the, the previous uh Councillor, but the um, I was going to ask how many people are actually living in the property now, and would they be made homeless? Uh, so, uh, but if it is residential, they should be paying full council tax, I should imagine. Yes, and as I, as I said within my speech, for the past so previously since 2012, the the person who owned the property never lived there, and it was rented out solely for holiday use. And as I said, my clients are trying to do the right thing here. Thank you. Um, David, are, are there any other speakers? No more questions, Chair. No, right. Well, thank you very much, Chloe, and uh, thank, thank you, you for attending this afternoon's meeting. Um, with that, we go on to the divisional member, and that's Councillor Sue Nicholas. Over to you, Sue.
sorry about that. My uh, mouse wasn't working very well. Um, I, th I think it's really sad that we're losing accommodation where people are actually living in a village uh, to holiday lets. And it's quite interesting. I don't think that somebody um, unlawfully renting it out as holiday lets for the last three years is um, a reason for it to be rented out now. Um, if I recall, originally there was um, an application at one point to convert the garage into a, a holiday let as well. So my concern is how this is going to develop. However, having said that, you know, Penrith Council in those days clearly recognised that these properties needed to be lived in all year round. And if we're looking at sustainability of villages, then it's really important that we have all round um, accommodation and living in of people who are going to be residents and take part in village life and, and the sustainability of the village life. So I would just hope that, you know, if you when you buy this property, that condition was obviously there. Um, and I hope that people will support the parish council and myself and the villagers and um, refuse this um, change. Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you, Sue. Um, David, uh, have you got any member that wishes uh, to put a question to Sue? Yes, Councillor Pascoe. Yeah, Councillor Pascoe. Thank you. Um, yeah, question is uh, what, uh, as I read it, I thought it was three dwellings that we were talking about, um, but seeing it's not, as Chloe said, um, what is uh, the position of the other two? Could somebody tell me what is happening with those two? Perhaps it would be better to put that one to Mr. Broomhead in a moment, I would imagine. But, I'm um, happy to deal with that. Jim. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll put that to Mr. Broomhead later. If that's OK with you, Arnold. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Were there any further questions, David? No, Chairman. No. So with that, we move on to are there any questions of the officers or any comments from the officers? Any, David? Uh, yes, Councillor Nicholas. Yeah, right. Thank you. Yeah, just, yeah. Thanks. Just to clarify, and it's probably Mark will be able to do this. Um, it's my understanding, um, Chloe's mentioned the fact that it's for new um, dwellings that the Neighbourhood Development Plan um, is trying to secure um, residential only. Um, I, it's my understanding that you can't put a clause in that says that that can't apply to um, existing buildings. Is that correct? Um, obviously, uh, when you do your neighbour plan, you can um, obviously put forward any um, uh, proposals you, you may wish. We'll have to get past the examiner. I think the the issue we've got at the moment is the neighbour plan is so early in its stages that we can't give that policy any weight, irrespective. Yeah, no, I just wanted to know because I was told that it couldn't be put in the plan, but if it can, then that's lovely. Thank you. Well, I, I, you're probably right, but uh, I think you can uh, put forward anything, but the examiner would have to to look at that. But that isn't the issue here. The issue no, is that, no. that policy, we can't give that any weight, unfortunately, at, at this stage. No, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if I may interject, sorry, it's Ben from Legal. Yeah, just to say, Councillor Nickers, and I think Mark Brim is right, it probably, we probably don't want to go down that route, but I think on St Ives, the recommendations that came back from the inspector, and that was kind of the test, wasn't it, for the neighbourhood plan, was that we shouldn't be doing that, that it wasn't, you know, um, recommended. And I think we followed that or with with other plans. So, so I would, but, you know, it's not Thanks. 100% where we probably want to head with this. No, yeah. OK, thank you. Right, uh, thank you. D David, you got some other questions? Yes, Councillor Kaczmarek. Yeah, Councillor Kaczmarek, over to you, Mark. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, this is a question for Ben at the moment, um, legal side. Um, there is a condition, this is a legal condition on this property that it should be residential, not holiday, and they're seeking to lift that condition. So, one, they've been in breach of that. The other issue is, before we lift any condition on a property, uh, we should know what the housing need is in this parish before allowing any more holiday uh, lets. Surely we should be, be keeping the residential stock we already have. 
So, yeah, thank you, councillor. So I suppose, yeah, you're right. So in terms of um, we're basically looking at enforcement, aren't we? And we'd, we'd have to ask, would it be expedient to enforce? That's the thing in each case. And we've concluded that in this case it wouldn't because well, the passage well, the passage of time is a major thing. Policies have changed. And as you know, as we mentioned, paragraph 55, we've also got the fact that we, we don't think the condition is that precise. It's not a condition we'd be using these days. And we've also got um, the fact that these days when we look at holiday accommodation, holiday and residential, we tend to, you know, tend to come to the same sort of conclusion that it's C3 use, that it is one use. And we've certainly lifted a lot of holiday restrictions. I can think of um, lots of examples where we've done that. So that's why we've come to the conclusion that probably it would not be expedient to, to run with the enforcement and to um, allow that condition, if you like. But obviously, you know, members will have well, different views. And we've had this discussion quite a few times at this committee, haven't we, where we've had sometimes we've had um, historic agreements coming forward as well and we say well technically they do still apply but in reality should should they and would we want to enforce that that's what we've got to ask i think right uh, thank you uh, have you got any other questions david yes councillor duffin yeah councillor duffin when um so when i read this i kind of thought oh yeah no that makes perfect sense we won't put a condition on now so how can we keep the condition on? But actually, I think it's right to say that in a small village where we a condition was put on um, a length of time ago, but it was put on for a reason. And I would like to think that we could keep that condition on and not allow this. Thank you. Uh, David, you got any other questions? Uh, Councillor Pascoe. Yeah, Councillor Pascoe. Uh, thank you. Uh, question for Mark about uh, the other two uh, dwellings that was granted this permission back in 74. Are those separately or are they all under one roof? If you know, what, are they all owned by one person? Um, thank you, Councillor Pascoe. As far as I'm aware, they're, they're all in separate ownerships. The reason why the um, description is maybe slightly confusing is that uh, a recent uh, case case law in terms of when you apply for a section 73 you always have to refer to the original description but obviously the application site only goes around the one property so we're not looking at the other two at, at this stage right. but you have to you have to repeat the original description when you put in for a section 73 application which is a uh, barrier condition uh, and they you. are still in to they are still in residential i take it well unless they're being uh, breached i've got no record of that but they they are subject to this condition right thank you okay. right uh, david you got any further questions uh, i did have councillor bastian but he seems to have disappeared so yeah. right no. No, no sorry I'll, I'll, oh you're back I'll, again <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry um <laughs> Mark answered the question I was going to ask. In other words, was the other two under the same um, commitment? And clearly they are. So thank you. Yeah, right. Thank you. So with that, we'll go into committee. So it's over to committee members. If somebody wants to make a comment one way or the other, or um, ho hopefully we'll get a proposal. So over to the committee. Got any volunteers, David? <laughs> Quiet at the moment, Chairman. <laughs> Councillor Kasmarek. Yeah, yeah. Right, over to you, Mark. Thank you, Chairman. I, I would like to remove refusal on this one. Um, the condition is there uh, for a purpose. It's for residential. Uh, the parish council have already said that there's 30% holiday homes already in the parish, and that's excluding what's probably rented out as Airbnb as well. Uh, these small rural villages need to be protected, um, and the condition on that property uh, should be protected because if we lift this one, it, it'll uh, open the floodgates to the other two flats that are there under the same condition. So it's residential, it should remain residential and uh, and safeguarded for the village and its residents. Right, so, so that's a proposal. Is there a seconder for Mark's proposal? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Sorry, that counts for bust and I saw fly shut on my screen. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Chair. Yes, I'm, I'm more than happy to support that. I think we've got a moral commitment really to uh, retain uh, a condition that was set, obviously with vision, some time ago. Yeah. Right, is there any contrary view to that or does anybody else want to speak? Any indications, David? No other speakers, Chair, no. <clears throat> right, so, so could, could we firm up on the conditions for uh, refusal, Mark? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's quite difficult because obviously decisions are made in accordance with the development plan yeah. unless other material considerations indicate otherwise. So there aren't no development plan policies that I can give you to support your reason. There are possibly a um, perhaps some paragraphs in the MPPF that might help you, but you are taking quite a risk in this refusal, but I will I will give you up uh, some wording. I've been listening to Councillor Kashmir, and he can correct me if it uh, doesn't fulfil his uh, recommendation. The proposal would result in the loss of a smaller scale dwelling within the village that is valuable to the local community when ensuring that the needs of groups with specific housing requirements and that the size, type and tenure of housing needed for different groups are addressed. There is already a surplus of holiday accommodation in the immediate area, which can, 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 can continue to fulfil the demand that is present and the loss of housing stock would not be outweighed by the modest economic contributions to further holiday let may bring. The proposal will therefore be in conflict with paragraphs 59 and 61 of the MPPF. Uh, so does that cover Councillor Kashmarek's comments? Can I come in, Chairman? Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I was just going to call Yeah, it, it does cover it. What I'd also like to add that be it the amount of people we actually have on the housing register within that parish, because there is obviously a housing need throughout Cornwall, so we shouldn't be taking away housing stock when there's a housing need. Does that not, when I say when ensuring the needs of groups with specific housing requirements? Uh, within that parish. Okay. Yeah. Happy so, with that. Uh, Councillor Bastin, are, are you happy with that? Yes, more than happy with that. Yeah. So right. So that that's what I'll put to the vote. So again, it will be contrary to the um, officer's recommendation. So it will be re for refusal on the grounds that uh, Mr. Broomhead has read out. So um, over to Angela, and we'll do the roll call again. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Bastin. For. Councillor Biggs. Four. Councillor Code. Ebba. Councillor Code. Four. Thank you. Councillor Duffin. Four. Thank you. Councillor Eakin Smith. Four. Councillor Harding. Four. Councillor Hurd. Four. Councillor Ketchmarrick. Four. Councillor Martin. Four. Councillor Pasco. Four. Councillor Robinson. Against. Councillor John Thomas. Four. Councillor Mike Thomas. Four. Thank Excuse you. Me. I just count that up. That's been carried by twelve votes in favour and one against, so the application is refused. Right. Thank you. Um, right, we then go on to item 4.6 on the agenda. We'll, we'll see if we can get this one done possibly before we go to lunch. Uh, we've got uh, until two o'clock on, on this Teams meeting. So uh, that item is Mr G Venning, land rear of 43 Clinton Road, Redruth. And uh, it's Scott that's taken us through that one. Got it right this time. Are, are you there, Scott? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. Can you? Are you going to share your screen with us? Yeah. If we just try that. Okay. Yeah, we've got that fine. So uh, over to you when you're ready. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. So um, this is a full planning application for the construction of six apartments, uh, associated parking, landscaping. So in terms of the key issues, um, these are considered to be the impact upon the residential amenities of the um, the neighbours and also the design scale and appearance of the dwellings proposed. So in terms of the strategic view, 
you can see that the uh, the site is situated within the Red Roof settlement. You've got Falmouth Road running along here in the northwest direction where it joins on the Four Street and also the uh, the viaduct in this area here to give some context. Slightly more zoomed in of the site plan, show the context again. And again, a, a site aerial, as you'll see, it's predominantly within a residential setting. Uh, Park Road runs along the kind of southwestern boundary. Uh, an unnamed access lane runs immediately to the eastern boundary. And there's no man's land, uh, which forms the immediate sort of northwest and southwest boundaries. And as you can see, it adjoins predominantly residential curtilage on all sides. So this is a, the, an existing site plan. The, the site itself is around 0.04 hectares, uh, currently comprises scrubland, which is used for ad hoc car parking. The topography of the land is a slope, it's sloping, it's sloping character. So the access lane, which on this slide here is on to the, to the north, uh, is at a higher level. And um, as you can see, in terms of the proposed block plan, it proposes two distinct separately buildings, one to the front of the site following the, the established building line and also a building to the rear. As I mentioned, there's six car parking spaces within the site with associated landscaping and access proposed for the three to the rear of the site, rear of the site off the access lane. So in terms of the building to the front, this is the, the floor plan just to show that it's going to comprise uh, two one bedroom units. And in terms of um, elevations, the, the elevation to the south is the principal elevation, which will front the street scene. Um, as you can see, it's a gable roof form with bay windows, sort of an actual stone finish and a chimney feature. And these two are the obviously the, the the remaining side elevation and the rear elevation, which would look which would front into the site. Again, um, this is just a proposed street scene that the applicant is supported with. Um, it just demonstrates how it sit the, the the building to the front sits between the existing character of the properties on either side. And just for reference, the kind of hazed out building which I'm sort of circling there is the, the building to the rear, which I'll talk about next. OK, so the building to the rear, um, it, it it comprises four one bedroom units um, access through a central communal stairway. Again, these are elevations. You can see it's two storey. It's a gable form design with gable projections. Um, in terms of this design, it's a render first uh, ground floor and a cedar horizontal boarding at first floor level. And this just this northwest elevation just demonstrates the sloping character which I mentioned. Again, these are the last two elevations to so the, the rear southwest elevation and the southeast elevation, which would front towards Park Road. So in terms of just to uh, just to highlight in terms of scheme amendments, um, the scheme has been amended during the course of the application in terms of this rear building it has been moved into the site slightly. And again, it has been reduced in terms of its uh, its form. So this this view here is from Park Road looking into the site as, uh, as it currently is. This is the access lane which forms the sort of eastern boundary which raises above the site. These are photos from within the site, um, various kind of angles just to show what the sort of immediate context is. This is from within the, within the site, looking back towards number six and number four Park Road. Again, these are views from looking west, looking towards the rear elevations of number 39 and 41 Clinton Road from within the site. This is the no man's land, which I referred to. This is the, the sort of western boundary no man's land. 
this photo is taken from the access lane, which is obviously the higher ground level, looking towards number 35 and 37 Clinton Road. And again, this is the no man's land, which forms the uh, northwestern boundary of the site. Again, from the access lane, looking in the southern direction towards Park Road. And from the access lane, looking to, in a western direction towards the properties of Clinton Road. OK, so the balance and considerations are that it is a, it's the reuse of a sustainable site, um, providing much needed housing at this location. It has um, strong social, economic, environmental benefits, which, which were in favour of the application. And it, it's argued that the, it obviously results in a visual enhancement to the site when compared to its existing appearance. Um, the scheme, it is acknowledged, the scheme will have an impact upon the amenities of neighbouring dwellings. However, it has been adjudged, it doesn't have it, doesn't prevent an acceptable standard of amenity. And whilst finally balanced, not considered to result in a, um, a refusal. I'd like to draw your attention to the addendum uh, that responses re received by Red Roof Town Council. Um, just to summarise, they mentioned in May 2019, they recommended refusal on overdevelopment. That was on the original scheme. In June 2020, again, they didn't support the scheme, but on overdevelopment, overbearing, loss of amenity and the housing needs assessment, which was undertaken as part of the Red Roof Neighbourhood Development Plan, identifies no additional need for one bedroom properties. In order to inform that view, a site visit was undertaken and the town council are aware that local residents have expressed concerns. Thank you, Chair. Right, thank you. Um, we have got um, oh, just the one speaker on it. It's uh, Cornwall Councillor Ian Thomas. Are, are you there, Councillor Thomas? Um, Chair, Chairman, it's Angela from Democratic Services. Uh, Councillor Thomas has been invited to attend, but I haven't heard anything from him. We yeah. have got Councillor Barnes here. Um, he's got his hand up to speak. Yeah. Is that OK for him to speak? Or? Yes, that's fine. He just um, part can I just today. interject, Chair, if I may? Uh, this I is Councillor Ian Thomas. Thomas. Oh, uh, did, I sorry, sorry, this is Councillor Thomas. Yeah, certainly. Well, you, you'd be on next, Councillor Thomas, if, if that's OK. <laughs> I, 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 did, I did respond to the uh, building invite. Um, but admittedly, I've I've just joined the meeting as this yeah, item. Yeah. Well, you're you're listening to speak, so um, you, you'll have five minutes, and after five minutes, we we would ask you to wind up. So okay. if you'd like to carry on, Councillor. Thank you. I'll, thank I'll you. I'll come back to Councillor Barnes. Okay. Thank, thank you, Chair. Chair. Um, very briefly, really, um, I concur with the sentiments of the Town Council. I'm very sympathetic to the number of local residents who have raised their concerns about the application. Uh, and indeed, I, I do find it um, difficult with the amount of overlooking, particularly from certain elements of the site, uh, over adjoining gardens or, or nearby gardens uh, and young children at play, etc. So I won't take up too much of your time other than to say that I do concur with the local objectors and with the town council and hopefully the planning committee will take all of those into consideration. Thank you. Right, uh, thank you, Councillor Thomas. If you can just hang on just in case you've got any questions for you. Uh, has anybody indicated that they want to put a question, David? No, Chairman, no. no. Right, so coming back to Angela, is it is it OK to bring in uh, Councillor Barnes? Uh, yes, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Councillor Barnes, uh, can you hear us? <laughs> yes, I can. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I okay. have uh, concerns about this uh, site. This site has been up many, many times, and uh, I think um, the different ones who who uh, bought the site have seemed determined to keep going until they get a result. <clears throat> The thing that disappointed me about the officer's report, and I think it's quite lacking really, is that uh, this part of Redruth is in the conservation area, and yet no photographs or designs were really shown from the road of Clinton Road. And, and you, <clears throat> it looks like you're going to have all these fine Victorian buildings, but these new ones, like um, 
photo bombing uh, the the actual design of the area, and it is a conservation area, I believe, and uh, that should be protected. And uh, if you wanted to put some the the housing in there, they should have been single story, and almost uh, like a uh, a t perhaps even a series of terraces of little mini bungalows have gone along. There is room to do such things. No need to put two story dwellings where it's going to photo bomb and ruin the, the conservation area. Uh, this council is meant to be committed to defending the conservation area and yet have chosen to ignore that by ignoring the view that these buildings will present onto Clinton Road. And if you look where uh, you get, if you take the photos back, when you show the houses in 41 and 43 Clinton Road, I think it was. Here you are. Now that's taken from a, a low level, but you're going to put two stories up there. They'll be overlooking those houses and taking away their privacy. But people from Clint, walking along Clinton Road or driving along will be able to see these houses. And uh, they, what they should do is refuse this now and change it so that you have uh, a, 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 like um, a single accommodation bungalows uh, at the rear of that property. And then you could have the parking at the front and uh, Bob's your uncle, and, and I'm not would not going to charge you for this. Let him doing this for nothing today, but that's what you need to do because this is a dog's dinner, and it should be refused as it is. Right. Uh, thank you, Councillor Barnes. Uh, David, are, are there any questions for Councillor Barnes? No, Chairman. No, so with that we move on. Are there any questions for the officers or any comments from the officers? David? Uh, yeah. Councillor Kuzmarek. Yeah, over to you Mark. Yeah, question the officers. Uh, looking on page 115, uh, top of the page, numerous applications have been put in on this site. Uh, some of them have been approved. It would have been quite useful to actually see what was approved on this site height-wise uh, and in, in scale. So um, that, that's the one question. The other one is there's quite a, a lot of comments from the World Heritage Site team and the um, Heritage Impact Assessment team. So you know they, they got concerns about this site. So two questions really. One is what has this site got planning permission for? Uh, and, and it would have been nice to see you know, the scale, and two is the, the comments from the World Heritage Site and the Environmental Impact Assessment. Mr. Brumad. Thank you, thank you, Chairman. Uh, in terms of the uh, what's been approved on it, I'll um, get Scott to uh, confirm that in a second. We have set out the reasons why in our report in terms of the um, the heritage impact and the obviously the design and the other impacts on neighbours. Uh, obviously, it's for members to decide if they feel um, we've adequately uh, covered that for them and whether they have a different view. Uh, Scott, are you able to clarify the past history? Yeah, I was just going through the past history now. Um, the, from my understanding, 1991 conversion of workshop premises into two dwellings um, and formation of acts associated car parking was allowed on appeal. Um, again, there's reference here to three flats, um, which I'm just going to confirm because it might leak into the uh, properties to the southwest rather than this actual site. Um, let me just check. I think. Uh, the, the key issue really is for members to make a decision on what's in front of us now. I appreciate the past history is a material consideration, but uh, obviously things looking at the uh, uh, previous permissions and refusals there quite some time ago. So I think we need to concentrate on whether members feel this is satisfactory in terms of its uh, impact on the character of the area and the conservation area and neighbours. 
All right, thank you. Um, David, have we got any other questions? No, Chairman, no. So, so with that, we'll go into the committee over to the committee members. Um, any comments from any members or any proposals? Not yet. Right. Councillor Robinson. Yeah. Councillor Robinson. So I'm wrestling with my microphone. Did, did we say we're going into debate now? Yeah, you're in the debate. Yeah, you in, in, in the case you wanted to speak. Yeah, um, I, I fully understand the comments that were made uh, earlier about building uh, putting buildings in that are inappropriate in an area where we have slightly grander Victorian houses. <coughs> and normally, uh, you know, I would I would be supporting that particular line. But we, what I see in front of us actually, uh, I think, could be um, compared to, to sort of muse dwellings. Um, and I have to say that you know when we see the pictures of the, the of the site at the minute, um, it desperately needs improving in some way or another. And I think what the, what is was being put here is actually quite pleasant and really ought to, if it if it's followed up as it's being described here, it ought to fit pretty well in, in into that cons conservation area, particularly um, if we're controlling a lot of um, the bits and bobs on the building uh, with conditions. So I think I'd be uh, in favour of, of supporting it. Yeah. Uh, are you moving that, Councillor Robinson? Yep. <clears throat> right. Uh, have we got a seconder for that? Councillors Nicholas and Duffin have got their hands up. Yeah. D did you just want to speak, Councillor Duffin, or do you want to second it? Uh, yeah, I'll second it. Um, do you and want I'll to speak as well? Yeah. I just want to say on the point about the gardens, I, I don't have an issue with I think when you live in a town, you expect to have some overlooking. Um, I'm in the, a village, but in the built up area and we have overlooking. I, I don't think it's unacceptable for towns to have gardens that are overlooked. I think that's how streets work, really. Um, but I too, I do like the designs and I like the way that the frontage still looks good in the street scene. And then you have the other uh, dwellings behind it. So, um, yeah, I'm happy to support this. Yeah, right. So um, j just take it down. It's been moved by Councillor Robinson and seconded by Councillor Daphne. And now I've got other speakers. Uh, Councillor Nicholas, did you indicate you wanted to speak? Yeah, Chairman, thank you. Um, yeah, it was just to make sure that the designs do fit in with a conservation area. That's the whole point of having a conservation area. So I do think that they need to be absolutely 100% um, fitting in with that conservation area, not standing out. Right, uh, David, we've got any other speakers? Uh, Councillor Biggs. Yeah, Councillor yeah, Biggs. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Chairman. Um, I must admit, I don't share some of the comments that have uh, been made so far. Um, I think uh, coming from Camborne, I think Clinton Road is an important part of our architectural heritage and the surrounding area. Um, once <clears throat> members have said that the, the frontage looks, looks, looks good, um, I have to say that um, I don't remember seeing any wedge shaped buildings in Clinton Road. And the first, the one which fronts the uh, fronts out onto the not onto Clinton Road, the, the side road, is is a peculiar shape. Um, that 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 to me doesn't sit well, and I think that must be some indication that the, the design is out of kilter with the present um, uh, present area. So um, I'm inclined to support my colleagues in Redruth, and um, I will vote against this. Right, thank you. Uh, we got any other speakers, David? Uh, Councillor Katzmark. Yeah, Mark, over to you. Thank you. Yes, I, I've got concerns with this application as well. There's um, there's a long history on this site, but if you read the reports on a uh, page from the World Heritage uh, Department, page 116, 117, and it goes on to page 118, and then we got comments from Historic Environment on pages 119. They're not happy at all about what's being proposed here, and um, and they, they, you know, I think we've got to go by what they're saying, and until we have a proper assessment of this land, we don't grant planning permission. 
and uh, I, I think uh, I won't be supporting this application as it stands, Chairman. Yeah, thank you. Um, David, have we got any other speakers? No. No, so that will go to the vote. So um, it's been moved and seconded for approval um, as per agenda. So over to Angela for the roll call, please. Thank you. Councillor Bastin. Against. Councillor Biggs. Against. Councillor Duffin. For. Councillor Eakin Smith. Against. Councillor Harding. Against. Councillor Hurd. Against. Councillor Kachmarek. Against. Councillor Martin. Against. Councillor Nicholas. Against. Councillor Pasco. Against. Councillor Robinson. For. Councillor John Thomas. Against. Councillor Mike Thomas. Against. Thank you. I'll just count that up, Chairman. OK, the vote for approval has failed by 11 votes in favour and two against. Yep, right, thank you. Um, the recommendation now. Oh, we need a recommendation, do we? Right. So um, we need a recommendation for the refusal and some grounds. Um, so anybody like to make that recommendation? Yeah, C Councillor Biggs. Uh, yes, I, I, I'd like to make some recommendations. Uh, certainly coming back to um, local policy 12 again. Um, and um, also in relation to uh, the conservation area and the World Health, uh, World uh, Heritage status as well. So if, if our officers could frame something around that, I'd be grateful. Yeah, uh, have we got a seconder for it? Happy to second, Chair. Yeah, does that, sorry, Councillor Nick, it? Yeah. Yeah, right, thank you. Um, Mr. Broomhead, on what you've heard, what, what, what is the suggested wording for the uh, recommendation? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, the proposed development by virtue of its, its excessive scale and design fails to demonstrate a clear understanding and response to its setting and would have an harmful impact on the character and appearance of the conservation area, which it follows would not be preserved or enhanced. As such, the proposal would conflict with section 72 what, uh, uh, bracket one, close bracket, of the Planning List of Buildings and Conservation Areas Act, policies 1, 2, 12 and 24 of the Cornwall Local Plan and section 12 of the MPPF. You, you did mention World Heritage, did you want that added in or not? Uh, um, I'd take it's advice. mainly down to... Um, I think it's important. I mean, the conservation area is the... Well, the conservation area. is a key one. Obviously, yeah. the World Heritage is quite a big... Um, in terms of its impact on the universal value, I'm a bit more sceptical on, yeah. on that. But you can, yeah. by all means, it's your, cho it's your decision. No, I think we need to be concise as we can on this, yeah. Chairman. And we're, we're we're yeah. yeah, so you're happy with that, Councillor Biggs. Thank and, you. And uh, Councillor Nicholas, you're happy with it? Yeah, um, have we got there in there about the historic environment, the archaeology and the well, history? I've put it within the conservation area okay. and then I've given you the policies uh, to cover that. OK, lovely, thank you. Right, so so it's been moved by Councillor Biggs, seconded by Councillor Nicholas. Um, the grounds for refusal that's been read out by uh, Mr Broomhead. So uh, we'll go over to Angela again for the roll call. Councillor Bastin. For. Councillor Biggs. For. Councillor Duffin. Against. Councillor Eakinsmith. For. Councillor Harding. For. Councillor Hurd. For. Councillor Katchmarek. For. Councillor Martin. For. Councillor Nicholas. For. Councillor Pasco. For. Councillor Robinson. Against. Councillor John Thomas. For. Councillor Mike Thomas. For. Thank you. Um, 
Yeah, the application has been refused by 11 votes in favour and two against. Yep, right, uh, thank you. Um, right, we, we, we will now take our lunch break. Um, I would suggest that everybody switch off probably their cameras and their microphone because we're still being live streamed. And then, Emma, can you confirm when we go in the second teams, have we got to log in again or? Um, uh, Chairman, it's Emma Co. You can stay in the same, it's the same Teams meeting. You don't need to leave that. It's only the live stream that will change. So this current right. live stream now will end and the yeah. new one will commence at two o'clock. So it'll be the same process. When we start at two o'clock, I'll tell you when we've gone live. Yeah, well, it's, it's um, quarter to two. I was proposing that we had half an hour for lunch. Um, OK. But so that'd be quarter past two. Quarter past two. Yep. OK. Yeah. That's so fine. if I could request that everybody's back. <laughs> fairly prompt on uh, 2.15 and it, it is a suggestion that you turn off your mic or mute your microphone and turn off your cameras and hopefully we'll see you at 2.15. Okay. Emma? Yep. Uh, I, I won't be here after two o'clock. I've got a mining talk to do for okay. um, yeah. code three. Okay. okay. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, Thank code, you so code green score would be appropriate being a code, wouldn't it? Yeah. Ah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Can I ask a question? Um, I would remind Councillor Barnes that um, I think the live stream is still going at the moment. Well, that's yeah, it. I haven't, I haven't had the confirmation yet. It's been turned off. Uh, can I ask a question? Yeah, so, sorry, come back. What, what questions you were asking? Well, well, the question is, when is my the item that I'm here for likely to be discussed? Well, we, we've got one item at Port Laden, which that could take a bit of time. And then that's the final item at oh. the end of the agenda. Oh, it's the second of two. The second of two, yeah. OK, I shall stay here and uh, wait. Yeah, I think it all depends on, on how much uh, Councillor Wallace has got to say at Port Stavon. Oh. <laughs> okay, then. Thank you. Wait, then. Mm -hmm.